6 30 p.m. on June the 3rd, following the select board meeting, the order with all five members present. Yeah. Well, uh, first item is consider additions or adjustments to the agenda. Are there additions from the board? I'll do mine. Um, so the rail show committee has been working on a project to replace the picnic tables in town and would like to use the town as a pass through for some funding. Um, we have a vendor lined up and we just basically need the town to receive the invoice. We have uh, donors lined up as well to fund the whole thing. Um, so no town money involved, just need the town to do pass through for the funding. So. Okay. Not that you need to be right off your lap, but that was not good. Okay, Tom. And um, quite a few. One is a liquor license for Dollar General. That came in Friday. One is to authorize the low rent grant agreement signature for Rail Trail brand. Hang on. Yeah. You said for Dollar Store? Oh, yeah. 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 Um, well, right. I think we have had an ongoing liquor license. I have never been in there. That's a renewal. Yeah, it's all right. So, this year, you've never been with Dollar Store. Um, so, potential highway access permit fee waiver for the village for their banner over Hill Street. Yeah, we can do that. And a resolution to bond. Uh, just a more formal, formal process of two weeks ago. And then three new ones that are one is highway center schedule, um, switching to 10 hour days, um, 4 10 versus 5 8, and just uh, the language came back from the uh, union today. Um, and, and just a lot of towns around are doing it. And then the request of the highway department to just discuss it and look into it. Jason hasn't even been going for it yet. Really. But it's like really fresh off the press. But that was what we were doing for that. Let's do that in two weeks and just send it out. Yeah, one month. Yeah, that's kind of planning. Yeah, okay. Um, two is River Road East. This maybe four, maybe not. Just um, talking about there's like an outstanding kind of health concern, and just I needed some direction from the board. I don't know if that wants to be an agenda item or just after the meeting, just phone calls, somebody to tell me what like best path moving forward. Um, I don't know, Duncan probably has more insight on that. I, I received a, an email from Giselle Eldred, so I was gonna, if you didn't put it on the agenda, I was gonna raise it as a so like, what, is there oh, cool. oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I don't care whether it gets either added to the agenda or not. I bring it to the situation. They just write this issue. That's right. That's all it is at this point. Lastly, is the HMGP grant that's due, I believe it's June 20th. Um, LCPC has a specific request that um, the representative of the town, uh, they were thinking me. Um, but could be anybody who just kind of, um, we have an August 16th deadline for buyouts, but part of that grant process is how we deal with those five, how we deal with the bought out properties without reducing to the two year floodplain um, and floodplain restoration. And then having a representative town to discuss critical properties, um, just to reach out to them to say, are you interested in the buyout? Are you in the plan to forward? Um, just when's the deadline? Is that like you know, two weeks or something? Right? They just extended it uh, to August 16th. Uh, okay. So, but the grant deadline for which we would be applying to remediate those properties is June 30th. And that would be when you say remediate, what is that? Um, it's uh, re um, it's bringing. Restoring the, to the floodplain to the two year flood bubble. So, two year storm would just, I'm not sure what that elevation is. So, basically, lowering. Right. 
Yeah, we're going to extend freedom for So, Tom, you said you want to go and visit all of these people. There's only a few properties that are critical, um, and there's different ways to do it. And the one is, for example, you know, Jenna's Promise has the help center right here, but their property actually extends down to the mouth of the guy on the behind the market. It's quite a few acres. And so if they did, if they were interested at all in the buyout, that's a critical piece that would help preserve the entire building for the mouth of the guy on. Um, another spot, I think they were low. Correct. Yeah, the flood water story. Um, you know, I think so. It's kind of just going and having a conversation to say, if you had all thought about it, now's the time to put in an application. And then you can always pull your application out throughout the whole process. But if you don't put an application in now, there's not going to be another opportunity. And what do you mean by lower? You mean for moving earth? Yes. But there isn't enough earth down there to make that. Thinkers, you know why. That well, yeah, you know what you're talking about, Michael. Oh, good grief! I, you see the amount of water that is in was in I this know, building. But we're getting slightly off topic here. We yeah. can add that as a new item right underneath the tent. Are there any other further additions or adjustments? Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Is that it? Oh, that's it. Sorry. Okay. Any other additions from the board? Okay. I guess we're on to reviewing voices and orders, which are being passed around. Which are which? Item number three is public comments. Is anybody public? public that would like to comment on that's not on the agenda? Um, I have a question. How, how is the board um, coming along with um, the concern of the seniors that have about to be in the building? That's actually an agenda item. It is. Okay. Yep. So we can. I, I think we can talk to, about it now. I didn't but, see it when I looked down the thing. Okay. Um, Sorry. Yeah. I think use of municipal building and dedicated space for seniors as item number ten. And I try to put everything else I just added after that, so you guys don't have to be here till midnight. You folks have an agenda over there. Oh, there's some right here. Well, Donna, should be here. Don't in the. Is this the only one we've got? Is there payroll too? All, all yeah. of it was in yeah. one packet. Mm -hmm. um, but we right. we only need to sign one. That's or... the big packet. Yeah. yeah. The only one that we got. Unless yeah. these are that. Yeah. Hey, Shane. Oh, well, oh, oh, one. I didn't see. We were all curious too. Everybody else had over there. <laughs> no, no further public comment. Uh, item number four is select board issues and concerns. I believe you already had one, Duncan. Yes, I wanted to uh, raise, as I said, Giselle Eldred sent me an email, which I think I forwarded to you, um, it regard, it's regarding uh, an ongoing issue that they've had uh, with one of their neighbors. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Could conceivably be downloaded under the dilapidated building, solid waste, or health. So, if you want share with the board that. That's the fact that we've been talking about for every year, four years. Yeah. It's been going more than we've done. So, yeah. All of those would go through health officer, right? Uh, and or the designated officer for it, it depends on which ordinance. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to tell right. somebody how to. Do their job, but if you look at the dilapidated building ordinance, the solid waste ordinance, and the general health issue, I think it potentially it's all three. So, in my opinion, they yeah, 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 no, it's not actually been around quite a while. No, I, just, I have a pretty lot uh, up in this situation. Well, it's still one of the things, would it be fair for the select board to? Request a report from the health officers on that. Um, is the board comfortable with that? I'm not speaking for the board. I'm asking you a question. They're, they're yellow and they agree, I guess. Yeah, Tom, you know, part of Giselle's concern question was she hadn't heard anything because she was told it was going to be an inspection and she hadn't heard anything. So she was kind of asking that. Tom responded to her, but really, I think the 
you know, with the health officer or whoever investigated it mm -hmm. should respond. Um, and again, I don't want to tell them how to do their job. There's an ordinance. I would just ask that they read the ordinance and apply the ordinance. If we as a board decide we are not willing to enforce the ordinance, I'll be happy to make a motion to rescind the ordinance. Fair enough. But if we're going to have the ordinance, we'll have to enforce it. Yep. If we're not going to enforce it, we shouldn't have it. Who wrote it? It's safe paper. <laughs> uh, okay. Any other issues or concerns? I'd like to uh, have an executive session for an employee evaluation uh, at the end of the meeting of the one to yesterday, two, and three, eight, three. Should have done that under additions or adjustments, but that's fine. No, you told me to do it under select board issues and concerns. Sorry. I bad. did what you told me to do. My bad. Do I have one? No, no more. This one and then no more. Yeah, I promise. So uh, I just want to, I know that the beautification committee has put in a, an email request regarding the uh, sunflowers um, and how to avoid the situation ahead last year with, of course, cutting them down. Um, the village weighed in on that. And I would like to make a proposal. Um, what that is, if so. I don't know if we'll do that right now, but at some point in the future. <laughs> That's something we can send out to the board and we could make that proposal at the next meeting. I don't know if it's really well, any solved. I think it's I think it's time sensitive to the beautification. They're either gonna do the planning or they're not. I think it's time sensitive. Yeah. What's your proposal? Well, I I'll put it in the form of a motion and then it would be easier to you know if it doesn't get a second, it doesn't get a second. So, my motion would be to authorize either Jason or Tom to issue a right of way permit to the beautification committee with five conditions. One, <laughs> one would I can give you a copy of this. If, if it, yeah, I may not, may not, may not go to, uh, one would be to obtain landowner permission. Um, I think we talked about that the last year when this whole thing came up. The second would be to notify the village so that they can flag any and all trip stops and mailboxes that they have concerns over, and they could do a no planning zone or any of those. Um, I, if I remember correctly, last year these sunflowers are dwarf sunflowers, they only get they're not three feet high, no, two and a half, three feet tall. Um, so we we could set a maximum height. Of, you know, between four, three and four feet, so it doesn't obstruct any vision or view. Uh, the fourth one would be to leave a clear zone of four feet on either side of any driveway accessing the street. And the fourth would be that they clean it up and fall. I'll second. You're going to do this right now. Now, this should have been more because people want to address this one. Would, would the public want to address this and you've thrown it into this meeting right now? As far as I know, the issue of right away permits is the third year. Is that right away? It wasn't in the agenda. It's being added to the agenda. Probably. Now, what, what's this? What's the play? Okay, I'll let you get a second and we'll have a discussion. Change second. Yeah, second. Now, what, what's the village take on this? You know? Can Garanjo then have a response to the email in which he said, I believe, correct if I'm wrong, but it was basically they've got curb stops and mailboxes within that green strip. And they don't want any plantings in there because it might interrupt their ability to access those curb stops. And he feels that it would be an obstruction to the traveling public and pretty unsafe. Situation. Well, to maintain a cordial relationship with the trustees, we should defer to their decisions. That's your opinion. That is my opinion. And if you want cooperation, we ought to just cooperate with them. They don't want it. 
If they don't want it, then we shouldn't support it. One way that we could cooperate with them is allow them the opportunity to flag any and all curb stops that they might have an issue with. That was one of the contingencies of the motion. I'll I don't think cooperation goes both ways. And when we approved this plan last year, as Duncan mentioned, we did at that time say that we wanted to have landowners to, you know, permission so that they, they knew what was going on. I believe that that happened. The beautification committee says that that happened. Um, and so, you know, for us to approve that and then to have people on the village side then say it's okay to cut it down because they think it's okay to shut it down. That's not cooperative with us, right? And so it does go both ways. This is a project that we approved last year. I see no reason not to support it again. Yeah. It's, it's bigger so, fish to fry in this community with some problem. Yeah. If that's your big bailiwick over there. So I can I propose a six sure, sure. regulation? I really think big six should be contacted if they're going to actually do it. Maybe I'm way overthinking that one you could tell them. No, I've got your picture right. They would have to do it. <clears throat> it's touching it's not right away. And it doesn't come right away to get there. Do they have a right away or an easement to the town right away? The village doesn't have any right away. So it's our what it's we're our talking right. about is our land. It's our, it's our right away. It's a right away. The land right. belongs to the problem. Right. So technically, if they if they denied permission and wanted to mow it, that's a green strip. That's their prerogative. So the town has the authority to do what they need to, and the authority to grant easements within, even though it belongs to the landowner. The landowner does not pay taxes on private. If we get that things, we should have an idea. But the village has easements. They have easements within. Okay, we gave them. Do they have like highway access permits? Stuff. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Maybe it's back. Oh, it's something that big. Yeah. Maybe I'm thinking that one too. I, I honestly don't think the village has actual movements within the highway right away. Um, and as far as the curb stops are concerned, it's generally the village owns to the Load side of the curb stop and the homeowner loads on the other side of the curb stop. So, in most cases, you know, the, the curb stop is within the highway right away so that the you know, landowner is responsible for the other piece. Okay. But all of that is math. I mean, both, not only is it math, there are, there are, pickups. there are, you know, from known points, trees, cell phone poles, whatever. Um, those as built drawings have very detailed information as to exactly where every each and every curb stop and mailbox is located. So oh, like, they should. They do. I know they do. Yeah. See? So, if you want to add uh, the beautification committee, you should contact the state. As an amendment, you're gonna have to accept it. Oh, you're gonna have to accept it. I would accept the town. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. The ayes have it. So now that was the last issue of concern. We are on consent items. The agenda that was sent out is considered approving the minutes for May 6th, May 20th. Um Consent into signing the adoption of the class for low policy, authorizing the chair to sign the town administrator's appointment. And if the board is okay with it, I was going to add Dollar General's liquor license renewal to the consent items. That's okay. To add that item and to pull all of the items that you mentioned as a single motion. Motion is there a second? Second. Further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? And the ayes have it. Is Randall on yet? Randall, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. 
Did you catch the beginning of the meeting or no? Yeah, I've been here since the meeting opened. Um, so you have a certified local government community. You want to do a <laughs> information on that? Don't know if I have one. Yeah, I don't know how you want to handle it. Like, as you know, I, I circulated a report to you all a while back, but there were a couple of potential action items on that agenda. And so I think the decision was that, you know, if there were going to be questions about the report, that we could wait until now and have those questions answered. So I don't, unless you want me to, I'm not going to run back through that report. I will just cover the uh, the action items on the agenda, and then just a couple of updates since the report related to items in the report. Is that how you would like me to handle it? Oh, uh, that's fine. If the board has questions, I'm sure they will ask. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I actually had a conversation today with Devin Coleman um, about certified local governments and the as you might expect, anything involving state and federal government, it's that and municipalities can get uh, complicated. Um, one of the things that came up in sort of trying to sense whether we had the volunteer capacity for a historic preservation commission, which is part of the CLG process, was there was an item flagged about the potential need for the village uh, to be a participant in this program. And in fact, Perhaps the village is the more pertinent participant than the town. Uh, the thing that's interesting is that like in the 80s, one of the very first communities in Vermont to participate in this program is Rockingham, which also has a town village relationship. And the thing that was a little that made added to my confusion anyway, was that the town is the CLG in that instance, even though basically all of the preservation activity actually takes place in the village of Bellows Falls. So when I talked to Devin Coleman about that, immediately he was just like, oh, you've done your homework and you've, you've seen the flaw, which is that's the only municipality in Vermont where that town village item is not handled separately. Um, and that the the way moving forward, aside from that one, which again was approved in like 1987 or something, um, normally it would be a situation where both the village and the town, uh, should they be so inclined, would both have to pursue CLG. Uh, it couldn't be the town with an with a uh, incorporated municipality within it. They they each have to pursue it if they're interested. The other interesting detail, though, is that. The Historic Preservation Commission that's a part of this process can actually be populated by the exact same people, irrespective of whether they live in the town or village. So, so it could be that the town and village both pursue it, and that the that the board, the Historic Preservation Commission that separates that functions for each municipality can be the exact same members, and they can have meetings, but they have to essentially warn them and run them slightly separately. So they could have a meeting, say, on a Monday, and from six to seven. The, the Historic Preservation Commission deals with the town and from seven to eight, they deal with the village. So they wouldn't have to have necessarily separate days that they meet, but they would have to sort of gavel in and gavel out for each municipality, even though again, it'd be all the same members. Why, who knows? This is the, the great wisdom of state and federal government for you. Um, and as I should mention, uh, further conversation is that the, Johnson Historical Society trustee meeting on the 12th, I believe they are going to discuss this and, and get a sense of if there's even the volunteer capacity to populate a preservation commission to pursue this. So I don't think it's necessarily an action item. It's sort of your purview. Would you rather authorize pursuing this and then find out maybe that there's not capacity and that's okay? Or would you rather find out if there's capacity and if there is, then authorize it? Either way, I don't think there's an impact on the board in any particular way or the community it's just a matter of however you want to handle that if you want to pursue it at all um you could either decide to pursue it and then say no well we don't we can't find anybody to actually populate this commission or you could say let's find out if we have anybody and then we'll decide if we want to pursue it that's the board's purview on that topic um and well, as a well, like go ahead I was just asking the board how they'd like to handle that, so we weren't coming back to the one song. Like, 
Is yeah. it required that the town and village do it? Or could we just ask the village if they are interested and just have them? I mean, if it's if it's mostly in the village purview, say that's fine. Anybody could disagree with me. Questions. Yeah. Randall. Yes. Have you already had a meeting on this already? I had a meeting with the person from the state. And the way that I left it with him regarding the village was, is that what I was, what my intention was, was to do an introductory email between him and the village manager and say, Hey, this is a, this is a situation that I'm aware of. Should the village be interested in this? Here's the contact person. Here's the information. And just kind of do that pass off. Cause it's obviously it's not in my purview to make a recommendation to the village as to what it should do or not do. Uh, but I just thought like, Hey, you, you may already be aware of it. You may not be aware of it, but here's the contact person. Should you be interested? And then if the person at the state wants to check back in and nudge them and say, hey, are you interested? You're not interested. Then that person would do that. Uh, but that's is that's there, the extent of the conversation at this point. Is this in relation to the meeting you had on the 29th of May? Was uh, uh, I don't know what you mean. Correlation between what you're talking about in the meeting you had on the 29th. Okay. The, the one at Jenna's promise that big community gathering. No, no, this is entirely an entirely separate issue. Now what was that all about? That is uh later in the report, but I can get into that now if you want to move on from this topic. I guess we can wait. Yep. How would the board like to handle it? Would we like to just ask the village to pursue it and Communicate with the historic society. Uh, would we like to and we town see if there's I'm more than happy with asking the village to take it on if it's mostly gonna be in their purview anyways. Yeah, I don't want Randall spending more time doing village stuff. So send the email and let the village decide. Is that good, Randall? Yeah, it's totally fine. Okay. Would you like to continue? Sure. Uh, so since it was raised, we can talk about uh, the process that was initiated, at least the planning side of it that was initiated on the 29th. That's the Vermont Council of Rural Development Resilient and Sustainable Communities Program. That was, to uh, refresh the board's memory, that was the process that we were kind of utilizing to help us develop a long-term flood recovery plan. It's not exactly, as a program, that's not... That's not exactly what it's designed to do, but it's a, it's a, it was an opportunity to have that process initiated and have it funded by someone else and to provide a bunch of capacity and uh, support from within and outside the community. So we kind of went down that route and uh, the meeting on the 29th was essentially a, a planning committee meeting that worked out the logistics of the actual meetings that will transpire in the future to discuss all of the issues around flood recovery to identify community priorities and programs, et cetera. Uh, one of the members of the select board was present at the meeting. Uh, Mark was present there. Uh, there were village trustees present. There were uh, folks from various community action agencies. There were residents. There was someone from the planning commission. The former select board chair was there. Uh, and it was basically just a, a, a process to decide what are the key themes that we want to pe have people kind of you know, kind of direct people's thinking and, you know, how are we going to structure the meetings that people participate in? How are we going to, how are we going to let people know who's going to be responsible for letting people know? How are we going to have it listed on the website? You know, all of those kinds of like planning details. Who's, are we going to have childcare? How's it going to be provided? You know, all of those kinds of mechanics were the things that were discussed at that meeting. And uh, there were a whole series of dis decisions made around those things, but the more, uh, pertinent ones were the dates for the future sort of town-wide and village-wide uh, discussions, which are uh, Monday, July 22nd, Tuesday, September 10th, and Wednesday, October 9th. And there was a whole convoluted way that those various dates were arrived at. There were dates in which VCRD staff was available to do those, and then it was about sort of a process with all the various folks there, but certainly very importantly whether there were existing town committee 
or trustee or select board meetings during those dates, and we ruled those out if that, that was the case, et cetera. And um, I don't know. I was really uh, I was really left from that meeting very excited because there seemed to be a ton of enthusiasm in the room, a lot of excitement in the room about the potential. It seemed like there was a real appetite uh, for it. We also had the folks, uh, Sam Young, that the select board met at a previous uh, meeting from FEMA, who he's there. He's also, as I mentioned before, he's going to be present for all the meetings moving forward, and his team is going to kind of take on the the actual writing of the flood recovery plan it's his he had a technical support person with him i don't remember their name unfortunately um that will between him and various fema staff will help write this uh flood recovery plan randall yes was it open to the public or was it invitation only this this part was invitation only because this was just the logistics planning in the future it's going to be a full full court press on getting anybody and everybody from the town of Johnson and actually an important, you know, to me anyway, again, I didn't make the decisions per se, but uh, one of the things I thought was interesting is that they were also going to invite people who had to leave Johnson because of the floods, because they had lost their home and they had to relocate or whatever, uh, or whatever. Those folks would also be invited to participate in, in the discussion about the, the priorities for Johnson, the future of Johnson, et cetera, and to potentially share, you know, their their flood impact so that it can help inform decision making. Now, but that who, it's, who go prepared ahead. the invitation list? Uh, the Vermont Council of Rural Development did in consultation with you know various other people in the community. I'm just curious how you arrived at all these different names that are on this committee and so on. I didn't even know a thing about it. I guess I wasn't supposed to, because it was by invitation only. Yeah, but I did mention it in my report. And if you, for instance, had expressed interest in saying like, yes, no, I definitely want to be there for this, like that could have happened. It's just that for a planning meeting, I think that the notion was that you don't want to necessarily have the general public involved in a planning meeting because then it, you know, you're trying to stay focused on task and identify all, again, all these very, you know, all these logistical issues. And uh, so that was sort of the thought process. And this is the process that they use in every other community that they work in basically. So they have a sort of separate logistical and planning meeting that precedes the meetings that are then open to the public. Hmm. Okay. Um, I'd like to go over Hang on, wait for it. You have the cost for the Vermont Tourism Summit, or are you just asking for a... uh the board at the at the time that I was discussing that and the two other events that are actually happening this week, uh had at at that meeting authorized an amount up to and not to exceed fifteen hundred dollars. And there is now, um, I don't have my spreadsheet open right now, but I believe there's about $300 that was not spent on those items. The, the two events that I have flat that I had flagged in my report, one costs, I believe, uh, $65. Well, I know it costs $65. The other one in previous years has cost $50. Uh, and one would, one would have mileage associated, the other would not. So they would not exceed the $300 that's remaining from that up to 1500. I believe it would be somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, it would be 115 plus whatever the mileage to Randolph and back is. So anyway, my, my, my inclination was we could throw those two things in if the board was comfortable with it. And if the board is not comfortable with it, obviously that's, that's, you know, the board's purview. Is the board comfortable with that? Absolutely. Yeah. You got three yeses. No. Somebody like to make a formal motion or do we have the time to trigger it? Uh, um, I mean, I'll make a motion to allow Randall to use the um, remaining $300 uh, to go to the, uh, let's see, how municipalities can drive local economic development and uh, Vermont community leadership. <laughs> motion and a second for the discussion. All those favors signify by an aye. Aye, aye. All those opposed? No. Yeah, it's happened. 
And then uh, just quick little updates related to the report. I had mentioned reaching out to someone at the Department of Tourism and Marketing. I'm still in the process of, uh, we, we had some email, we had an email exchange, but we're going to set up a phone call to, um, because as I said in the report, you know, the Vermont uh, Department of Tourism has this kind of, has like divided the state up into these regions. And on their website, if you go to those regions, then it'll give you like points of interest in those regions. And in the region that we're in, uh, Johnson doesn't have anything listed on that site. So I'm, I'm trying to have a conversation with them about like what we might have included on that site so that when someone goes and they see that Johnson's part of this region, but they see that like all the things are tagged either in Stowe or Morristown or whatever, it's like we, we want to have, you know, something tagged there so that people go, oh, there's a thing I can go and do in Johnson related to, you know, this tourism and marketing effort. And then a separate piece uh, is that, you know, the, the state whether you think that it's wise or not, um, the state also engages in contracts with social media influencers. And again, it's the state of it's the state of marketing now. Whether you find any <laughs> any interest in what people on social media are doing and all the goofy little Instagram reels and TikTok reels that people do, it still actually moves people. And because the state has these contracts, they also are looking for things for these people to come to the state and do. And there's there's people who are social media influencers who deal with things, you know, like outdoor recreation or people that do things with food or whatever it is. And so that's a further conversation I'm trying to have uh, with the state is just like, hey, if you do bring one of these people, here's here's some things that maybe they might be interested in Johnson. And who knows, they either may or may not. But I, I think in my view, it would be great for Johnson to have, you know, this kind of exposure and marketing happening for itself. And again, none of this is as far as I know, anyway, and if it did cost, I don't think it costs anything. And if it did, obviously, you know, you all would have to be consulted and et cetera. But I just, just to flag that, that that conversation is 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 ongoing with those folks. And uh, the Vorak piece, um, as you know, later on, you have a, a I believe there's an agenda item uh, to to sign the Vorak grant agreement. I did go to the sort of uh, the press release uh, event re related to the Vorak grant uh, that was down in Pico, and they had sort of a huge number of other grant winners who were down there and all the folks from state government and, and leadership positions down there to talk with people about their projects, et cetera, and I went to that. They issued a press release that I passed on to the News and Citizen. I'm hoping they'll, they'll do a story on it because Lamoille County had had a few people. I think it would be interesting for people to know that you know there's a certain amount of funding coming coming into Lamoille County for various uh, outdoor recreation related projects, uh, and the RFP has been written and it was for this scoping study, and it was sent out to a variety of folks, a variety of engineering firms, et cetera, to, to hopefully get. You know, hopefully, we'll have a good response rate. Who knows? And I think that's the you know, that's the all the updates I have on based on the report that you all received. Um, Randall, I wanted to ask a question about the uh, the Vermont Vacations website. Is that like tourism related businesses only, or is that swimming holes and you know rock climbing and all those types of different things? It's, it's a variety of things. And if you have specific suggestions for consideration, definitely send them to me and uh, I will see if, you know, what they, you know, it's not like they have an exhaustive list for communities, you know, they're, cause again, they're doing this at the state level. So they don't know communities. And I don't know that like, I've seen some communities that have a hand, you know, like three or four. So I don't know if, you know, I don't think that we're going to end up with like any more than that. We might only end up with one. We, I don't know if we'll even end up with one, but um I, you know, they, they do a lot of data tracking with their site. They do a lot of analysis and they, they, um, you know, they do, they definitely see results in the marketing efforts that they, that they put forward. And, uh, and so again, if it's a no cost situation, I, you know, I just feel like we should have something there so that, you know, people who are using this site to plan a trip are, you know, at least given the option of understanding something that might be going on in Johnson. I think that that's super critical. I mean, just today, Randall, I was at the coffee shop. Two men were peddling from Swanton to St. Johnsbury, and they came into Johnson. They ate at the coffee shop. They wanted, they asked where they could find water. 
um, you know, and send them back to the um, Madonna or maple fields. But I think this this is the future, this outdoor economy. Well, as I put in that report, I mean, you know, a couple of things that I that I attended at this conference really brought that home, you know, especially like this, this, this project that I was talking about, that's a collaboration between a nonprofit in Burlington, Vermont Adaptive Ski and Vem, what they call Vemba of the Vermont Mountain Bike Association. You yeah. know, uh, the, the, the way that Vermont is at the forefront of uh, recreation for disabled folks is astonishing. And the amount of money that's being spent, the amount of money that's spent, not just, on the equipment or just on the specific trail access or whatever, but, you know, just that circulates in the economy. And then there's, you know, there's the anecdotal pieces, which aren't necessarily as persuasive, but, you know, the, most of these sort of guide groups say someone comes in the next year, that same person brings two or three more people because they say, Hey, I was just in Killington riding their adaptive trail and it's super cool and it's super fun and it's very open and accessible. And then those two people, then they communicate and on and on and on it goes. And, um, and I just think there's a huge, you know, economic opportunity there to uh, sort of participate in this very rapidly growing segment uh, of the Vermont economy and the outdoor economy and, and you know, sp specifically. But there's a lot of money, you know, on the table. And there's also the critical mass piece. That's another important com component, you know, I think it's, sometimes people say like, well, there's a trail in the neighboring town or there's a trail over here. Like, why do we need the trail? And it's, it's about like that same thing. Like when you're planning a trip, it's actually good that there's like a trail in this town and a trail in that town and a trail in that town, because then you're like, oh, you know, this day we'll go here, this day we'll go here, this way, you know, same thing with breweries. Like how many more breweries does Vermont need? <laughs> I don't know, but, but like people like that there are a ton of them, you know, and that they can go and structure a whole vacation around visiting all these places, even though they're ostensibly in, in you know, some level of competition, there's also a level of like cooperation that happens because you create this crit critical mass that makes it like, well, am I going to go to Vermont for one brewery? No, but will I go for 10? Yeah. You know, will I go for one trail that I can ride? Maybe not. Will I go for 10? Sure. You know, that kind of thing. I mean, I'm sure there's some level at some point where you reach a saturation, but I don't think that we're in any risk of being there yet. And then I would just, not to go on too long, I would also just flag that, you know, these event-based sports, event-based uh, uh, marketing opportunities are huge as well. You know, like the, the, like I said, that presentation I saw from the Mad River Valley where they do this, this marathon, I mean, the, the amount of people that they're drawing, not just from out of state, but just, you know, like internationally even is, it's, it's astonishing and they all have to stay somewhere and they all have to buy, you know, food and all the things that come along with that. And there's just, there's opportunities there for sure, you know, to like get one of these events on the radar and get them organized and let Johnson be known for whatever that event is, you know. Thank you very much, Randall. Yeah, well done. Any further questions? Rosemary, I did it again. That's fine. Keep on going. Are you sure? Yes. It's because the header's smaller. There's not like stuff underneath it. Are you sure? Yeah. It's my fault. That's fine. Okay. Was it this time? Well, like there's nothing under Tumblr Treasure Report in like the dark yeah. font. Uh, so I don't know. I'm just gonna go with the <laughs> second time. Third time, just moved her out. <laughs> we're gonna need to change Boy, this up a little bit. Straight. He's starting to speak. We're huh? gonna need to put that in bold, <laughs> italicized, underline next time. Different font. You can tell she's a short time. Flashing light. Sticking up there, though. Uh, it's just in here. He has it. Back there somewhere. Ready for Rosemary didn't want me to come back to her yet. She can pick her time in the meeting from now on. So there are two items under your report, Dustin. One is the interlocal accessory agreement, and the other is the rephrasal RFP. It's the select board scene. A proposed, do you have the printed? I put on the table here. So they, they got that before I mean, yeah. yeah. 
Yes, but you know, it's very good on next to next. Um, it's the Hyde Park RFP as a reference. I haven't actually done the Johnson RFP. Yes. We were talking about reappraisal. Yes. Could I get a motion for somebody to approve the assessor and the I would move to approve the interlocal agreement and authorize Evan to sign. Okay. okay. There's a motion and a second further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Wait a minute. This is going to be the new agreement to, for the assessor, right? Yeah. I've been working on trying to find listers in the town. Several other board members have all You know, assessors are great, but we need actually listers in person uh, to maintain a good tax base. Uh, when you have people that you can only work like one day a week, or you have these agreements that are into 2029, you know, and especially at this juncture when these school taxes are going through the roof, yeah. we need people on the ground all the time looking at changes that have been made on people's properties, increasing the tax base in our community. Um, one man a week, uh, one person a week can do this, all of this stuff. We need listers like we had years ago. And I think one of the reasons why we didn't have listers was that the town was too cheap to pay them a decent wage. And the thing is that we're paying a tremendous amount of money for assessors, and that could be put into listers with boots on the ground. So it's obvious that probably the disagreement will pass, uh, but I am not for it at all. Okay. Further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Mm -hmm. uh, aye. All those opposed? Nay. The ayes have it. Sorry to cut you off, but the beer appraisal RFP we'll talk about now. I just didn't want to lose your hat. One other item. Oh, okay. Where's the signed copy? Just put it down. Thank you. Probably sign that. I thought Sheldon was going to sign it. You were going to print off a hot copy. With Berkshire on time first tonight, and that's supposed to forward the document. I haven't seen it yet. So you'll hand it to me. Yep. Yeah, or forward or Yeah. Okay. Once I have to see if we go get it. Okay. Reappraisal RFP. I submitted the Hyde Park RFP values, and I can tailor it to Johnson. Wondering if this is a format that you'd like or if you want something different before I put in the energy time. You need to find it. You have got a lot of paperwork. Going it's got a, a little picture of Hyde Park. Um, yeah, it does. Did you see it? It's color, too. Yeah, that's just a great one. I don't know. I packed it. I've got a copy of it in my packet, but maybe it's a little bit. Is there an artifact? Oh, you got it right here. Wait, is there only one copy? No, I'm just six. I thought that. I've got that. There was one on the packet. You can share. I saw I saw it. I saw it on my computer. I need to go pay for this. Between you and Duncan, you start taking stuff off. All right. Have you got a copy of them? No. Oh, nope, I do. I do. Yeah, it's probably in your final two. If it was all saved for the one doctor, like I just flip up. Uh, I see. So ah, the, you got it. Got it. Yeah. The oh, question is, does the board like this more? The five parts are pretty generic when I read it earlier. So yeah, yeah, no, no issue. How many firms are even gonna bid this? Usually, if it's one, possibly three. Nimric usually will, just one. Yeah, Nimric definitely will put it been in. Um, Tyler Technologies might, though lately they've been saying no. If there's a place down in Bennington that may be interested, um, not a lot of feedback from them, but potential. And that would be about it. Wow, I would send it all to all the vehicles in the world. They want to be in. 
So there's a link to on TGR's website of a free available for us. So they would all get a copy of it, yeah. along with it being posted to the newspaper and the BLCT's website. Gotcha. You get a sense that how far out member is? 2029. I'm not even here to deal with this. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be back. Eric's never come to die. You got all the years. Justin, I had a question for you. The way this is structured talks consistently about the kind of the consultant making recommendations and you know drafting models and I'm not seeing anywhere where it actually is saying they're developing in essence the grand list, which is I think what they're doing. That would be a appraisal firm. Yeah. Yep. They would come in. The Johnson side probably two years in advance, so starting in 2027, and they would do a sales study. They get the current sales in Johnson and surrounding areas, and then they would calculate the land schedule based on that. And then in 2028, probably starting in July, they would perform inspections. So either 2027, 2028, they would go around and do physical property inspections of all the properties in Johnson. And then they would do the final review in May and then do pre hearings at the end of May, lodge the abstract grant list for June, and then continue working with Johnson through DCA hearings based on the reappraisal agreements that the towns of Berkshire. Hyde Park and St. George have them. And that sounds right, but this document doesn't, as I read it, it talks about them developing models and making recommendations and all of those things. It, what they're really doing is establishing values on individual parcels, right? Yes. Which then becomes the grand list abstract signed by you as the assessor. Um, but it doesn't. I mean, if you read this, it just sounds like they're kind of making recommendations about that ba based on inspection, based on the sales studies, all that stuff. And then but, I, or if we have listed at that time, would approve all those changes. They don't just say yes. Have you been through a reappraisal in another town? Not yet. No. So I went through this in Peachum in 2019. And um, what the consultant did to teach him was that they actually set up the values for camera and then the listers based on like say 80 percent of the popular of the houses right they come up with the values so like if you have electricity it's like a seven if you don't it's a four and if you have 200 amp it's an eight if you have 400 amp it's a nine there's some values that represent some abstract but you're actually creating a, that a grand list and then so which then gets approved. No, well, what, they actually didn't create the grand list. What they did is they created the, the template within the software, which might be the models that that's referring to. And then the listers or the assessor put assigns those numbers to that model that's created by the. So that's why I was, are they creating the model within PAMA or are they actually producing the abstract? So they're, in camera they're doing the schedules of camera is what we put all the data input in but like what type of property you have just mobile home a shingle roof type of heat um they assign the values associated with all of those factors in that and then they they themselves do all of the inspections for the year that the grant list will be lodged so that, since it's a two-year reappraisal the first year they won't be doing anything with the grant list the second year, they will be doing all the inspections that will be for the 2029 grant list. I believe I will be signing it. So, what's the confusion? Well, let me give you an example. Under G, the contractor shall produce, review, and verify fair market value estimates for every property in Hyde Park, which shall include a property card. The contractor working with the town should produce a change of assessment notice to be mailed to every property of it. That makes total sense because if you're if you're 
I'm confused as to why it's saying an estimate when what they're really, it sounds like what they're really doing is creating a property card, which would then be the basis for a new assessment in a change of appraisal notice being issued in all of that review policy. Why don't they just say creating a property card as opposed to an estimate? I'm you could just say. remove estimates from it. Okay, I'm saying because this isn't theirs. This is the town's request. So Hyde Park approved the way this RFP is worded to have an estimate, and their reappraisal agreement reflects the RFP in their own language. And then we can adjust it like contract. I get that. I, get, I understand what an RFP is. I'm, I'm just questioning why wouldn't we just ask them to come in and do a total townwide reappraisal? I mean, we, we are. You don't think this covers that nothing because of the word estimate? I think there are numerous. I read through this earlier. I don't, I didn't highlight mm -hmm. all the places, but to me, there are numerous places in this document that are squishy. It, 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 to me, it, I understand that what you know the proposal is going to probably end up being an actual townwide reappraisal, but I mean, okay. there's a lot of language in here, though. Yeah, under deliverables, it says the final work product <clears throat> will be a completed grand list change on assessment while the city's updated. And that could be, you know, that could be it. That could be the intro. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, deliver deliver a completed grand list. Do it, do it full timeline very Do you not feel that like having the that in the deliverable deliverables satisfy your concern or I'm more concerned about and I'm probably worried with some stuff, but no. I, I think there are some things in here that are it's not as clear. I think that the deliverable is clear. And if everything you know was weird to like that. So Justin's initial question was, is the board comfortable with this format? I'm not hearing an issue with the format. Yeah. But I am hearing no. I would never literally it, the board. It, in G, right. if you just remove the estimates, it would say the contractor shall provide, review, and verify all fair market value for every property in X town, which shall include every. Just getting rid of estimates does read much more direct. Um, and I'm supportive of doing a search and, and being direct about it. The rest of the board is. Um, obviously, you're going to change it for Johnson and have to send it out. We'll see it again. So, do we, do we, are we picking one of the tasks from Justin to draft it on feed it? Bring back for a new point. Yeah, we definitely have to see it again. I, With a direct vote. Do we want to kick this can out of over another six months? I've been asking for it to get uh, Do you have a sense of about what it'll cost? Around well, a hundred dollars a parcel. We have around fifteen hundred parcels. Only one hundred fifty grand. Wow, oh, head first was hundred and six. Something, yeah. Yeah. This is like where gave up the salaries for a year because of it. Yeah. 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 So, uh, <clears throat> I don't think we need a motion. Is the board's temperature that they would like Justin to affirm this format up for Johnson and come back to us? Yes, yes, that you heard more direct, no estimates. Six seventeen. Do you want to backfire? Do you want to backfire? First meeting in July. Is that reasonable? What's the worst that happened? Thank you very much, Justin. Did you have anything else under your report? Um, I have a separate document that was requested. Of the implications of waiting for the townwide reappraisal and the effect of the CLA and the tax rate. 
I haven't had this reviewed by the higher up people with higher qualifications, but I did my best on it. The amount to be raised is from the town report. There's the current randomness value for 2024 and times it by 0.8999, which is potentially the municipal rate for Johnson this coming year. And that would equal the amount to be raised here. Um, after reappraisal, so I did the calculations for the 0.7415 CLA, assuming that everything stayed the same, which just um, from the value equally. The tax rate would go to 0 0.5169. Yeah, and I didn't do the math much over 100. But that still didn't raise the same dollar. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's a lower tax rate of higher values. So, you know, maybe I think I'm the one that has been asking for information about this. It sounds like maybe it's been confused. What, what I'm interested in finding out is we're at 70, 74%. Are we paying a penalty? Or are they simply using that 0.74 and multiplying it by a hard grand less? So my, my, my question really is, is in that are we are we because we're below seventy five percent below but below one hundred percent are are we paying additional taxes which get set to the state because we're below that that's that's you're, the you're question in school tax statewide tax yes Justin you might want to I would think that that you're acting sixty extending receiving what's that. So when the, yes. you're below, if, if so, what is it? That's what I want to know. Okay, how much? How much of the equalization study that brings us up? We'll have to pay twenty six percent higher. So that way, like all towns are equal, you're not weighted or you're weighted based on your. If your assessors are doing a bad job, right? <laughs> That's how the state equal is for that statewide average. Do you? So, where I understand the question. I think you're good. I think so. For the education rate, you want to know if we're paying a penalty or additional fees on having a lower CLA, like what yep. the town's paying. Correct. The right. Correct. Is there, there a direct penalty? Is there a cost that we are paying above and beyond just not being at the equalized grant list? Rosemary, would you know the answer to that? Yeah. yeah. The other, if you want to ask about the weighted study as well, it came out in 2022. Those two factors, I think they put a they just said a whole last year on it, but I don't know if that's going to be off this job. Yeah, somebody else, yeah, <laughs> find out. <laughs> and if you folks have any additional questions for me, or like I hear him regarding the listers and having more feet on the ground, and if there's anything that you need from me that I'm not providing, please let me know. Okay, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Um, are you going to email that for Doc? Yeah, I hope you prefer that. I don't come to Doc. Yep, thanks for that. Jason, you're up. All right, we got color. Huh? We got color. Oh, yeah. Did you print your color? The one you printed for me looks like and when I brought my color one, I was like, I think it's pretty good. All right. Uh, so we finished taking with my um, and that's all up to our the MRTP tanner. Uh, we put the new hydrant in the skate park, and we moved it to actually moved it to the moved so it would be out of the way for future construction down there. Which include. For the movie. Yeah, that's good. And we just continued the one that was behind the shed that that will be used. Uh we're working on exhausting material out of the town gravel pit and hauling back in our at the same time. And as of I read through today, we have about a fourteen thousand dollar credit up to for the material that we hauled versus that we hauled up versus the material we hauled by. Uh, the salt truck's all done. The low pro picking up the north parks. They did right now. Um, 
trying to do some footwork today. Get the inside and moving all the way up. We got uh, better back road screen qualified from the intersection of um, Cemetery and Body Hall. That intersection from there up to Watt Road. That's all going to be cranked. And uh, $20,000 drainage for the plant. Uh, and we got the grants and aid grant going from Water Road to Mackey Road. Go from Water Road to Mackey Road. And then we're going to finish that section of my intro after we get the grant done to bring it up. That's pretty much everything prior to the report, except for the class four segment, which is the color. But Matt Glenn, Alec Jones, he's the head of the uh, planning commission. And we were talking, he asked me how ambitious we were feeling. And I was like, well, we're always pretty ambitious. So there's the class four roads that are highly priority. If we get our two grants that go to board finished, by September 30th, we can start the next year's grant or when we them again. We're going to put some numbers together for the class four so we can start getting grants for that because we're so far in advance on the entire work that we've been doing. So then we can start utilizing that in the class four. So, yeah, so what are these right. numbers in the block here? The block well, road segments. Would they? These are the green is the ones that are not hydrologically connected at this point. Uh, the one of the ones that I wanted to point out was our class four versus our paved. Right, we have more class four. Than we do paved roads. Yes, there's some there that I'd like to explore about in the future. I said that you make yourself available and it's a member of the state. The roads that don't have any houses or that are not barely a road anymore because it's a very old road. So we're turning the road to save us for the energy that we apply for the past 25 years. So whether or not the state, he said, ends up finding or not. That's still up in the air. He said for the towns that aren't doing you know, pretty good work really and kind of just you know, down the road, they want to make it possible to try to make it work with the workload. Wonderful. I will say, Jason, those um, ditching coming down toward Woodward Road worked really well. It was fun to see how the water flew when they were holding it. Yeah, it was like a. Yeah, the water of the town was actually coming in. Where we're working now is the last of the world. It's a little brush in it. It's going to be a big difference. My girl, you know, the guys who were driving the road out together and you can see the plant is the road kind of risky and it's not going to get you off and they're moving up. Oh, yeah. No, but the whole with a little pedal in the end. Figured out. Can I bring up something here? Yeah. Can I bring up something? Sure. Okay. So I don't know if you know where I live, but I live just going up off the French Hill on the plant. And there's a ditch, a big ditch alongside my property that is never cleaned out, never maintained by town village. I don't know whose responsibility it is. There is a grate there that's supposed to take the water, but there's like this amount, this amount of dirt on top of the grate. And I know from experience, having lived on the farm since 1969, that if that ditch doesn't take the water in heavy rainstorm, my driveway is messy. So I have to ask, can I, what can I do to keep either village or town? And I don't know who can do this. Keep that ditch cleaned out so that I don't lose driveway during heavy rainstorm. I do know we're going to clean it out usually uh, the quarter schedule for the next year. It's a bunch of not weaker things. Yeah, that's so why that I has to go to our phone uh, for that because that's what we're making. So when we clean that, we can like outside area. Either the front or the front, not the way to get rid of those. Yeah. 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 Ye
I see that for the comparison network, it's going to take over the town soon. Yes, it is. Yes. In that we already own the town. But it's, certainly, it's certainly been trading <clears throat> my over the edge of the bank. Yeah. I'm sure, you know, our highway guys work really hard. I, I know. And they can, next time they go to the town, maybe they still have a great job looking at stuff and have a clean idea Problem. I know what she's talking about. I was kind of working in the town when it got clogged up and at the end of the this one we decided to bring this stuff out. So we acted on the monitor to the problem. Gotcha. There is going to be some work that goes from there up to the way to the mission to the land there, but the rest of the uses the land for after addiction. <clears throat> okay. Well, thank you for bringing it. Thanks for getting those grants. Yeah, well. Any board members, further questions for Jason? Uh, apparently not. We have one. I don't think there's anything else we can do. So I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> Close Brian's last chain. <laughs> All right. We're getting to the administrator's report. First item that is the use of the municipal building. And I believe this pertains to, I'm oh, sorry, I didn't get your name earlier. Right Carol. We're talking about the use of the municipal building now. Okay, sorry. I was back on the dock when because no, but Hyde Park has volunteered a group of volunteers that goes around and helps to take care of the off different people's land. I was just wondering if Johnson could find people that might be interested in doing the same thing. Are you volunteering? Yes. No, I mean, yes, but uh, it's a volunteer. Absolutely. It's because of the trip. Um, I think if a dedicated group of people came to the board with a plan, the board would certainly listen to that plan. I can say that. And I think they may have gotten some grant money to help with that too. Yeah, I'm not sure. Signs and stuff. But you're right. They they for several years now. Yes. Doing a lot of help with reclamation. Construction. I wonder if it's been successful. I don't think you reclaim that. Too. It's hard. Susan? So I happen to know that they didn't get grant money. They have a $3,000 budget from the town. And uh, the town is very supportive of what they do. And they are looking for volunteers. They started out with 25 and they have 70. They started out with 25? Lindell directly. <laughs> Well, I was one of them, but I didn't have time to do it forever. Right. So, Tom, uh, use of the municipal building um, and a space for the seniors. I believe we're getting furniture back. Yep. Today, I think it's a one month anniversary of ordering. It's quite exciting. <laughs> so, on our way up, we noticed that the listers room has chairs in it. Is there some reason we couldn't use that? Or are are there listers in town? Uh, it's our assessor, Justin. That was right here. Yes. We don't have listers in. No, that's what I'm asking. Uh, but that is that's the assessor. And I think. And how often? She's sharing that here? with Randall. Right now, I I'm, I'm actually using it. Oh yeah. That. So every time there's a meeting, the village and the town take my desk away and bring it up here for the meeting. <laughs> so after the next meeting, I'll be bringing that table downstairs, and that'll be my desk again. That's the this table. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's not really being, you know. I think there's a lot of times where you have to have sensitive conversations, and you need privacy, and uh, you can't have that in the space upstairs. So I've been using that uh, to have to make my phone calls and conduct business. Um, so it is. Uh... I mean, the office is still closed, right? Is the construction completed downstairs? There's a punch list up to do. I'll follow up with that tomorrow. Um, 
just I think it's like having drop rolls, the occasion that would set these numbers, just like the final touches. And then it needs to do a carpet cleaning and a fine cleaning after the construction. Is there any reason why we couldn't make that space available to the seniors while we are waiting to move the office back downstairs? Um, that's in the town village to discuss. That is a good point. Yeah, we can't unilaterally make a decision for this building because the village owns half of it. I'm trying to think of another town space that we could offer up in the interim. Is there space in the old mill house? What about the church? Are you still meeting in North High Park? Well, that's the art of the painting. We're meeting in the fire station in North High Park. That's part of the scene that's just paint. And we went there because, well, we could have gone to Venice Thomas, but their floors are all carpet and we painted. <laughs> and we were thinking, we're not going to spill paints, but there's always a chance I could spill paints. Right. So we wanted a facility that has a wood floor. We're meeting in North Bay Park, right? Carrying our supplies there every week. We're close. We're really close. Really. Thanks. How close is close? Can answer that to the furniture arrives, but okay. Close. Close there. You've been told we've been told that for the last two months. We're close. You know, when you work up here every day. Those two months have been the longest two months of my time. Oh, my time here. So. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm not here. So I haven't been here in two days. You know, it's funny. Rosemary and I had a conversation about leftover items, and she's like, I'm order it from somewhere else. I've never seen Rosemary so sassy in my life. In fact, the shop and fire department was their big term. What? We didn't. What I did is I put out a call why I put out something on Facebook and something went out went out on purpose. So we have space available in the North Hill Park Fire Department bought into the district first. So we went with it. But make sense to me that right next door and you know. Well, I don't know of any organization that needs any fire station, but maybe they would let I am. I think that's an issue. <laughs> But that's a village thing. That's a village. I almost think they have carpet on their floor too. Mm -hmm. okay, that they have carpet on the floor in their in their big meetings. But I, I shouldn't speak for the trustees, but I'm pretty sure they have carpet in there. I'm not sure. <clears throat> I'm just like oh, oh, so, so we're expecting the furniture in two week area, depending on them delivering it. But there's the out period of two weeks. As soon as it arrives, we'll have to schedule IT and phone company because everything is rerouted. So we have probably a week to put the furniture together. We did, uh, Dale, Pedro did volunteer his crew. So that we could, they would make them available, make them available to put the furniture together. So it'd be done at the possible in place. And also assist with bringing it downstairs so it would be fast. And then, but we do need a week once our furniture is in place for IT and we need to come back to come in from the floors to then set it up. Do you guys know about how large the space is? <laughs> and what are the physical requirements? Do you need an oven? Do you need sinks? Like, what, what are the things that you need in that space? Well, it has to be in the back of that's a given. Yeah. Um, it's nice that all our supplies are right here in the cupboard. If we need a place to store supplies, right. And yes, the kitchen is nice because sometimes we like to share them. Not from the other town owned properties that could have those. I don't know that we have town owned properties, but something that I was thinking about was whether we might be able to ask Tom. To look into whether there's any space available up at the college um, that they could rent to us for the next, you know, month, two months, while we're getting this figured out. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything that fits those needs, but that seems like the place to ask. Have you approached the United Church about their gathering in there? They have no kitchen. 
and you know we, we basically need some some kind of pitching and filling. We were finished with problem solving was back in September, October. I reached out to Church of Nazarene. Did you guys? That has a carpet point. What's the issue? Yeah. Well, they want to And we need. Yes. We guys paint every class. Well, there's different groups of the scenes. There's a bunch of groups, but there's some seniors that get together and share a meal and play cards. There's a group of seniors that get together and paint, actually paint the church. Um, and then there's another group that will. Mm -hmm. So there's different bone builders and then there's bone builders. So there's different groups that meet at different times. So they need a, they need a space that can accommodate the various groups. But there's no under the umbrella of seniors. Does, did, did the seniors form a 501c3 nonprofit? You did? Yes, I'm not sure if it still exists or not, but yes, there was one in some year or two. Yes, okay. that I know of, yes. Yeah, I, I'm just, I'm putting my, um, <clears throat> been around for a while, hat on. <laughs> I remember when, you know, when this building, uh, when this property was bought and the building was built, and you guys have referred to the deed that, Marion Prescott wanted very much to be able to have a home for a senior self. And the way the deed is written, it actually says that you can build a senior center um, on the property as long as it doesn't interfere with the operation of the municipal offices. So there is, don't get me wrong, but but the deed itself does not say anything about that space being a dedicated it senior space. It says that, yes, that you will provide us one. That's what it says. Well, it says Where, it will, where does it say that? It, it says it will yeah, provide uh, room on the lot to build it. It doesn't say it will provide a okay. senior uh, Okay, I'll bring the paperwork down from the attorney and, and show you what his opinion is. Well, we've got the deed right okay, here. We have the deed right here. I think the deed, okay. deed controls. Did you get a deed in your package, or you just have a? I have a deed at home. For the public, it says to allow for the construction and use on the land conveyed I know. by the senior center. You must have a different take on the deeds. Yes. But and don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say no, you no. shouldn't Take me. occupy the space. Anyway. Yeah, I, I'm I'm not for a minute suggesting that you shouldn't occupy the space. I'm just pointing out that the the need to me is pretty clear that the use of the office takes precedence over any other use. Oh, we're not supposed to interfere with anything that Pat, that you are doing here. I understand that completely. We aren't interfering. They're not. All we're asking is that we get space back eventually. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to point out and be as clear as I can that I don't believe the deed says that any portion of this building is dedicated to senior use. The deed really very specifically says that the seniors may build a building on the lot so long as it doesn't interfere with the construction with the use of, of this building. Yeah. Eric, you were you were here, you negotiated with Marion, and you probably have a better recollection of anybody. Go for it. Go for it. It, I read the deed, and I'm obviously not an attorney, but my reading of the deed is what the intent was of our negotiations with Marion. And Marion was very active in the senior group and was trying to get a senior center developed or built or what have you. And she, in negotiation with the town village, she reduced the price. I think it was five thousand dollars or some amount to have this covenants in the deed that would allow for space on the property for the seniors to build a senior center. 
but there there never was any discussion about dedicated space within this bill. You know, obviously they're able to anybody's able to use it, any committees or or groups or what have you of the town, as well as the seniors, but it was never in a dedicated space within the building. The only uh, the intention of the negotiation, and I believe it's it's spelled out in the B, is that the town and the village must provide space for a senior center if they got organized and were able to get the grants built. It also says that the plans for any such building would have to then be approved by both the town and the village. Yep. Um, we could uh, give or deny approval for any reason. Yeah, obviously so, that protection had to be put in there to for the town to build a business. But uh, right. there was the intent that if they were able to, then they were trying back then to get the 501c uh, qualification. Um, I never even knew if they got it or not, but they, to my knowledge, never pursued the uh, building of the senior center. There, there is the covenants in the deed that we would have to town and village provide the space. Oh, I'm a senior center. That's in the deed, but is there any other agreement that the town has signed, telling, saying that we have, uh, we have room in this building? No, I think it was actually understood that this the town would grow to a point that the offices would. Soon the upstairs entirely could grow. And so I think um, it might have been assumed at the time of construction that if this space was used, it was probably only temporary um, as the town grew for the various offices. Of these. Um, we haven't got there yet in 25 years, but it, I don't know if that assumption has changed. Mary, do you want to jump in here anytime or not? <laughs> <laughs> well, Ray, would you like to say anything? <laughs> Other than I missed you again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Other than the fact that we stood out down the wall at night and, and I begged you to ask them about stuff and that you, we did have a right to be here and you said yes, I did. I did not say that. I said I was ready for the floor at the next meeting, which I did. In the spirit of moving uh, forward, and we're, 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 right at the, we're right at the finish line, right? We've all been through a hard time. You know, it's been hard for you. It's been hard for people upstairs. What do you need to get through the next four to six weeks? Like what? Like what? Just to like just to stay where you are for four to six weeks. What? What would help to make that easier? The paper is not like you said. It's like continuing to build the right because it's an appropriate place. It's, we're also meeting in different people's homes, which works. It's not only the greatest, but the stairs, but we make it work. So we would much prefer to be here. The lighting is better. You know, the room is more space. Our supplies are here. Right. Can like we make it work? Yes, we can. I can tell you from my perspective, I'm sure the board shares it. We're looking forward to having this spot on office back open and community space back open. Incorrect, me. That's the goal. Does that answer your question? You guys are wondering if it'll be open back up. I believe it will be as soon as our office staff are moving downstairs. Back. And this is open back up, right? And we're probably going to have to talk about remodeling up here or something, but we can work with everybody. Else. Oh, fine. We can have the scene. Yeah. Our group is fine. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for coming. Thank you, sir. Rosemary, another opportunity. The other front one related to the elbow. Uh, you can put this in here. And it's the HMGP grant. Uh, the representative. You want to look back in on that one? Yeah, so I met with um, LCDC, Melissa, and said uh, last week. Um, and we kind of sat down and looked at an area of um, where the bios are. 
happening. And then what critical properties uh, would help protect the downtown, specifically along the guy. And there's been some new, there was an extension to August 16th for the buyout deadline from June 21st. And with that came um, some outside the box thinking from environmental management. And, um, and there's, a, there's ideas surrounding um, easements and using like easements to the town, the lower floodplain, and then using this HMGP money. So that way you're not actually buying out property, but you're just having an easement on somebody's property to do a floodplain restoration. Um, and then there's also the idea of, buy, of this approaching the, the buyout process as a whole. Um, the deadline for this grant would include this kind of larger grant picture, right? Which just came out of that conversation that uh, Eric actually. You know, it involves uh, some of the agricultural land along the Lamoille, and then particularly right along the mouth of the Guyon, where the Lamoille backs up into the uh, market. But kind of the backside of the scene. And so um, that plan has a deadline of June 21st, I think, June 20th is the deadline for that grant. Um, and so how many, the, how many grants? I think it's as big as we know. I don't know that I don't I, I don't know that I have there's been 90 something going on. State. Yes, yes. And so we're so this is a basically a letter of interest or intent. Correct. Not it's not a specific price. It's my understanding of all the towns hit by the flood. Uh, Johnson is the most municipal damage. Um, I think Barry probably has more. Yeah, I think Barry's recently in my house. So there's there's um, probably five or six towns that are going to receive the bulk of this money. And we're at an opportunity now where we can act on this in a short timeline um, and maybe change the face of Johnson, maybe protect it for the next 100 years, 200 years, or we could, you know, sit back and not do anything. It feels like there's an opportunity here where we had people who do what they do, our local planning commission, who said this would be, these are critical locations, but it's inappropriate for us to approach them on behalf of the town. And so they're asking that a town representative, be it the select board or myself, just go up and have a conversation and just explain the significance and the options available to those property owners. Um, and they, the language to be used by the town representative would probably come from LCPC, and that would be approved by the modern emergency management. So that way the language is consistent uh, with each property owner. And, you know, uh, I think the risk to the town is the uh, there is potential for loss of grand lists. Um, but we're also maybe gaining grand lists because when we have another July level flood, if it doesn't flood downtown, all of those property values just triple, you know. And so I think if we put these measures in place, we can keep the Johnson as we know it. If not, we're waiting for the next flood to tell us what one of the next set of buildings we bought out, right? So we think you're pretty optimistic that the failures triple yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I guess the basic question for that specific: How many properties you're talking? About? Yeah, not many. So there's, um, I don't know. One, one was part of uh, Oak Brook Farm. One was part of Harvey's. Um, park, which that is, that is adjacent to the skate park, you got a little like and like a little fingernail that sticks out below our property. Um, one is Union Bank, and kind of on this side of the Guyana. Uh, one is um, the health center here, and they own land that actually extends across the river, kind of behind the Williams property and along most of that frontage. Um, and then one is there's like a peninsula. I'm not sure the owner off the top of my head, but about three houses down, they own significant acreage. And so those those are the ones we're going to be addressing, saying, "Hey, would you be interested in an easement, a subdivision, and a buyout, or just a buyout?" And just it's some combination of that. If we can, if the town could assume from the people of those critical areas, it would have a significant impact on the potential to uh, flood water shortage through that floodplain restoration down to two year flood. Um, and so it's just. And it's just a conversation. That's all they're asking is that somebody 
give these people the information and the options and ask them to move forward. And it's not saying that it's going to happen. LCPC came up with this list. Uh, so they came to me to see which buyouts were approved. And then we kind of sat down for a couple hours and just looked along. There was a, they had a list of things that they had for from all the towns, actually. Johnson was just had two right from that meeting. And so we looked at that giant list and said, how can we apply these along with the oil and the guy on? And that came up with this. It was like kind of an outfall of that earlier meeting. This was kind of the application. And now here is the how do we make it happen? Here, like the project development part. But like in order, to, in order for those dreams to come true, we have to ask the window. I mean, well, I might have my song. <laughs> Wait till we get old, right? Eight or ten years ago, LCPC did a study on the Memorial River, and there's four properties that were of significant impact to colloquial flooding, flooding and ice jam flooding. One of them the town just purchased. There's three more. Why aren't we focusing on those three instead of 10 other we think this will do? Their flood model show that those four properties are important. I'm just going to follow what, you know, that's what they do, right? So I think. Yeah, they did this. And there may be overlap. Yeah. No, there's no. not. And, and coincidentally, you know, at the same, we had this meeting, and then like two hours later, it's like there's like ears in the walls. The state of Vermont says that they want to investigate putting in uh, floodway culverts on the bridge right here, right on the guy on Route 15. So, again, helping with ice jamming, again, helping with that. You know, so here we are creating this giant floodway um, so that we don't have the same problems. Um, and so the state and so and Seth um, is actually going back to the state to try to put for a further bridge. I think it's a little crossing. No, no, it would be the John, the one called. On the Memorial, yeah, here, what right by Johnson Farm. Yeah, so that call. he wants to put both bridges into the same application for AOT to have floodway culverts on both of these bridges. So, again, there's no more backup, right? Because the problem is we don't have like high volume, we don't have high velocity flooding like Harvard does, right? We're like building this here. We have like a lake effect, we want to back up. And so, how do we do how do you solve that backup problem? Is by creating flood water storage and by storing flood lines. And not allowing it to back up with floodway culverts. So we're solving it be on both of these bridges and then restoring floodplain where we can, where we have where we have the most impact. But I think <clears throat> if the sewage treatment center moves, you know, that probably opens up the window to what properties are now more critical than others. Um, I, I'm assuming that's probably where this conversation shifted from a prior study to a current study. Well, they dropped the bridge down by the Hoyas, the Royal Bridge of Tire River. Whoever did that. We probably just created a dam. It does. Yeah. They dropped it. That, that is one of the properties. Yeah. That field there, it's in their study. LCPC was proposing to drop that three feet. Your memory is usually better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> and they were going to put it. Floodway culverts, didn't they? But they were going to direct them because they didn't want to go those streets. Yeah. Not to take the conversation away, but every flood that Johnson has had up until today, we always talked about rebuilding. And like, right, this July flood, the whole conversation across the state is different. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about, you know, if you're, you know, retired right now, you have a 10 to 15 year game plan. But if you're 30 or 40, it's looking pretty grim. And the state sees that because those are our leaders are now that generation. And so everything we're doing is for 40, 50 years out. And that's really what the question is. Like there's a new vision for a better tomorrow that in 2017, when that study was done, didn't have. It was just like, oh, this is a good idea. For now it's a we have to our uh, you know, it's our children's life. You know, it's our children's future. So are the board wishes to approach these properties on this or not? Do a quick temperature check. I like the idea of getting information out to folks. I assume that most of them are aware that they, you know, could take part in a buyout, but if having more information out gets more people involved, then it's a good thing. Yeah, I think that probably there are people that don't want to go through the buyout. They don't want to lose their home, but maybe they'd be interested in selling an easement on their property, which I don't think I 
people have heard about. Brandon. You know, there might be a hunk of land out here. I won't say who owns it, but it, if you went to them and said, geez, you want to buy an easement to lower your lower your swamp land even more. And is there any reason why that could that concept couldn't be incorporated in the letter of intent and be done as part of the project if it gets approved? Um, as opposed to going out there proactively now, not knowing whether we're going to get any money to do it or not? I don't know. I just know the request that came from Senate. That's a good question. For the free application, I mean, it's that's just, all it is. You could say, like, we thought about this and this and this, and we don't need to go down the Well, it's like, yeah, it was like my comment to you, back to you, but, uh, for every property we take off the tax roll, it's not just that we're taking out the tax roll. We're, we're removing a house that somebody was living in. Um, in my mind, those houses need to be replaced with people. Yeah, well, absolutely. And I thought they need to be elevated. Is that what you're thinking? Raising up? Maybe they're going a different place altogether. Okay. You know, maybe, maybe they end up being in a, in a different location altogether. But um, so, are you talking about the like, industrial park? Well, no, I, no, let's, let's yeah. get that. <laughs> let's we'll move on from that one. So we'll, yeah, that's going to be. I'm in favor of, I, I actually think getting information out to people is better than you know, it isn't like we're strong arming them. It isn't like that somebody from the select board is going and saying, We think you should do this. It's like, if you know this option exists, if you could sell an easement on your swamp land or your, you know, land that's still your house. I tell you what, when you go down to the valley, you go all the way down the things that you see all that water. How big are these holes going to be to make a fraction of an inch? difference in this village. Think about it, really. The amount of water that's out there and how many cubic feet of dirt you're going to have to remove and gravel to make one fraction of an inch in this village. To me, it's a, it's a studying boondoggle that whoever's going to get the engineering fee is going to make a pile of money off it and it's not going to amount to nothing. That's the way I feel What's interesting is that study that was done in 2017, the model was already built. In I understand that, but I don't understand how they figure they can make that much of a difference, really, with a little bit of area that they that they yeah, modeled. I saw it. I was on the board then. You know, I thought it was a waste of time then. Well, the, it wasn't a waste of time because now it's being applied. The same study is being applied with new values and new locations. And like that's what's cool. We paid the $50,000 for that model. Now LCPC has the data and has a tool. They just put new values into it, and they and they can create. You know that's what's kind of neat about that. So it wasn't it wasn't wasted then. It might not have applied as much, but right now it, it means something. I mean, you you may think it does, but you you think of the amount of water that there is and how much you're going to have to take out of the ground to to make up that difference. You just don't have it. You don't have enough land here to address what you're saying, Mike. It, it's the, the point of these, you know, lowering the ground is not necessarily to prevent a July level flood event because that that amount of water, no matter what we do, is going to flood a significant amount of the downtown. It's all it's built in the flood. Plain. That's true. So what we can do is make decisions that that lower for events like December, where a little bit of water got into some buildings in town, but you know, six inches being reduced by by lowering it in, in feet here and feet over here. Never gonna happen, six inches. The deal is on the corner, what we talked about was that the land that just got bought, that ice jam is something that's actually gonna probably pay off and, and that so corner. To address okay. that, the other thing that we're talking about here is increasing the amount of water that can get under that bridge that we know is backing up and causing more flooding. So it's not just- The bridge you know, should have been higher. I, I would agree with you. It's not just lowering land in town. It's a whole, you know, all encompassing approach to it. And it's I not, it. I wish I were smart enough to understand the modeling and, and, you know, look at all the maps and say, if we lower it by three feet here, it's gonna, that, 
there are people whose job it is to do this work, it. and they're much smarter than you or I, and I do think that we should at least take their opinions on this. But something isn't really too rocket science. I mean, I, I worked for a power company for over 26 years. I've been around floods in Morrisville and seen water and everything else. But I tell you, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I live long enough I to see all of this stuff dug out of the ground and it makes a difference. But I just don't believe it. Never will I believe it. I got the water man. <laughs> I don't know how much of a water man I am, but you're certainly uh, that water. I've certainly yeah, yeah, I've seen a few floods. But Mike's right. I mean, anything that we do in Johnson will have a municipal effect. But what is going on right now is beyond Johnson. If you look at the watershed area of the Lamoille, it's huge, really huge. It goes all the way up to Cabot, uh, uh, Walden. It's where it starts and comes down this way. It goes up into Eden. It goes up into Belvedere. It goes up into uh, Memorial Hyde Park, obviously. It's a huge, huge watershed area. And it, progress or things like this can be done all the way back up there in Cabot in Walden and down through making places for water to go. That's where we think we can make a difference. But just to hear in Johnson, what you do here in Johnson probably benefits Kingdom. But Not what, by much. But what they do up in Hyde Park in Morrisville benefits Johnson. See, if you had flood control like Wrightsville Dam. Okay. Well, that's one of the ideas. See, if you had that flood control further away from us to stop the water from coming here, that makes a difference. But digging out a few holes around Johnson, the village of Johnson, it would make much difference. If, you know, you've read the papers, the discussion with Morrisville wants to take out the dam at Green River Reservoir. Well, one of the talks that we've had is don't take the dam out, make it like Wrightsville flood control dam. So at least the dams there to catch the water that comes down out of that area. But things like that, thinking out of the box all around this watershed area is what's going to be required. They would have to drain Green River Reservoir for that to be a reservoir for new water coming in. But the state doesn't want that. Well, if they take the dam out, it's going to be drained. Well, the thing, but that's a whole nother yeah. ball game. But, ball but that's just one example of things that all along this watershed area can be done. But yeah, you got to start doing it down here. Is gonna make We're getting into re-engineering the river here. Uh, the specific request is, do we want to authorize somebody to a road to plan on this? But hearing two board members, yes, I tend, I guess I gave my card up, but I'll say that Duncan is leaning towards putting in the application if we can and not go train the landowners. That we know it's done. I I think it's a wonderful idea, <clears throat> or it's an idea worth pursuing. I don't know if it's a wonderful idea, but but I'm certainly more inclined to see if we could put it in the application here. Okay. Are you against approaching landowners and against putting it in the application, or I don't think what my opinion really makes a lot of difference. <laughs> it's uh usually i'm a, kind of the odd man out anyway but it's, uh, i agree these are all less than teaspoons in a lake if you lower these properties i would like to see lcpc go back to the properties that they deemed as very important instead of a couple of people sitting in a room and saying that house that house that house will go because yeah that's one thing well, you can look into the very important ones if you want to, as long as it doesn't cost it. So, do you want me to send you that report, Tom? Uh, I guess we need a motion at this point. We need to take the temperature. No motion? So, I'll move that we um, <clears throat> empower somebody from the town and the planning commission to approach. Possible landowners in the question. We want to narrow it down to the designated certain properties. Or yeah, we have about a week to accomplish this. Yeah, I mean, essentially, all it would be if you say yes. I mean, 
I didn't test this one. Okay, I'll talk about it. One, two, three, four. So four or five people. Yeah. And we'll if we have approached these folks and just offer them the option. That's really a, you know, it could even be a phone call. I I understand that. Yeah. Um, just to let them know that this option exists. Yeah, I mean it's <clears throat> so you're making a motion. I am making a motion. Did someone from the town approach these landowners with and share that um, these units has or an option? Okay, there's a motion. Someone from the town. Yeah, that's a motion. Somebody can. Okay. Without a second, we're not going to amend and it. You say these landowners. Do you mean the specific ones Tom mentioned before, or is it up to Tom's judgment? I mean, it's not my judgment. And it's or, like, or, I also feel weird about putting their just put these. I feel like it was inappropriate. If there's, their names. If there's right. a second, yeah. we'll amend it. So okay. right. hopefully, it's suggested yeah. owners. Is there a second? Okay. Motion dies. Right. Without any other motions, Tom, I guess don't approach landowners. I didn't see any board members. Let me try one. Let me try one. Uh, I will move to empower Tom uh, to work with LCPC to develop a list of potential landowners and language to reach out to them with um, that informs them of the upcoming buyout deadlines uh, and any options that LCPC deems uh, worthwhile of, of getting out to them. Okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. Most in a second. Further discussion. So I'm I'm trying to figure out the mechanics of the time. The the application is due by June 19th or 20th. Right. <laughs> and the, the buyouts have been extended to August oh. 16th, 16th, 16th. It's <clears throat> going a little too late. How that work? <clears throat> The, My understanding well, was that the, the June 16th was sort of more like a letter of interest and it didn't have to have all the specific things. Maybe I'm no, it's buyout double. No, buyout no, 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 no. no. The June 20th is the pre application letter. Sure. It's August 16th. August. The, the buyout. And the pre application letter may or may not include buyout that talks about other options for interest. Would we need to have all of the, the properties that we're thinking of using for that pre application letter? I mean, I think the intent was if you had a letter of intent or an email expressing interest from the property owner, it would give us a better shot at the okay at, for the pre application letter. Okay. So, did that answer your timeline question or not? Hey, why would we not? Uh, I'm almost a little confused at this point. I think I'm still confused. Uh, the June 20th is the MAHMGP application, pre application. I understood Tom correctly. What he's saying is that it would be nice for us to, before June 20th, have a letter of interest from interested landowners who might possibly go into a buyout process, et cetera, et cetera. We don't necessarily need to have those letters, but having them adds to our our ask. I mean, I think that was the intent. It's just to like let them know, okay, you know, like, hey, here's options. I mean, especially who knows what they're going to do with their property, right? If they're on the fence, this might be the kicker to pull them there. Yeah. Okay. There's a motion and a second. Now, are these you pieces have of property of 100 foot old ones? <laughs> <clears throat> the 100 foot old ones that we're we're going to be uh making a second on them 200 feet. the 200 feet old ones. yeah, yeah um, we're going to approve so them. do we know our other towns in this process time Wolcott and morrisville and hardware yeah it's actually johnson has the least number of ideas about this of this application so all the other towns are in this group effort or so high park Wolcott, morrisville it's all the time belvedere uh, eden Everybody has ideas to help in their town, right? And it's 
And it's this whole, I could even ask that with the, for that. It's this like four page document. It's, it's a spreadsheet. We represent about one inch. It's probably like 40 inches of idea. How long has this been around? I uh, just started. When did you guys meet? A lot of weeks ago. Yeah. 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 So Eric's been in announcements. And the, these properties, I think you may have already answered this, but these are all properties that were significantly flooded and it is believed would qualify for a buyout. Yeah, I mean, I think, so like in 2017, you would never touch a farmer's field, right? <clears throat> like, I'm a farmer, you touch my field, I'm going to be really upset. But for the first time, I think it's like brought to the light in that meeting, like, let's start approaching some of these farms along the Moyle and see where they can help, right? Like, that was like a brand new concept as of like a month or two ago. And so this is like, how do we apply that? Where was the best effect in town? So, right. I'm going to call the question. I feel like we're getting way off topic on function. I would love further discussion, but we seem I'm to be trying like, to get more into it. Well, yeah. So you, you can withdraw your motion in any different direction. You can keep talking about it. It just seems like. What are you going to do with the farmer's land again? That's not what's going on. Sure. It's not no. relevant. And whether we're digging holes on it or how deep the holes are going to yeah. be, none of we that could, is relevant. What's relevant is we want to get information out of people who are possibly. Yeah, well, I, get, I, I, I get that. Flooded. That's, get that's that. a relevant question. You can't take it down below the floor. In the rest of the valley, too. Yeah. Call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. I don't know how you voted. I don't know how I voted either. <clears throat> I haven't voted yet. Are you abstaining? No, you can't abstain if you, you know, there are certain reasons for abstention. I don't have. Um, are you going to take a walk or you know, vote president like you do in Washington? Yeah, I, can't do that. I, can't do that, I, guess. I think that counts as a yay, though. Does it count as a nay? Anyone else? Uh, I'm motion I am. Uh, well, to get the motion off the table, I'm going to vote with the yays. <clears throat> Hey, the eyes have it, Don. And you didn't even have to vote. I vote nay. I'm good. All right. Well, I could easily have gone the other way. Why didn't you? If you had the opportunity. I know. Try <clears throat> not to vote. That's instant. Force. I like to make it. I like to force it on the Force it on Eric. He tried to get by on skates, folks. 23 right. years on the board. Did three good so, does that years. answer? That's a really good, good, good you, being Tom, can you have a yes <laughs> from the board on that? We're good. <clears throat> okay. Thanks for your up here. We are not your order. that far behind. <laughs> then, why do you call the question for? It depends on what clock you're going by. I feel like central time would be almost right on. Yeah. So you have a presentation on upward bound project proposal. Yeah, so it should be in your package. Um, here, just mostly to support Andrew, who's from uh, the upward bound representative. He um, approached the rail trail committee about um, potentially putting an internet way finding sign um, somewhere near. The rail trail and so we met and discussed different locations and proposal together so yes let him speak um i can elaborate a little bit that was more or less a quick summary of it um Ohio or up in the college upward bound um the little photo here is what might represent what we were hoping to build um and we thought it would be cool as College and Johnson upper bounce located there to kind of like uh, maybe build one with the students. It will be uh, part of their academic morning. They come here, the, the high school students come for five. Let me just explain upward bound real quick. Upward bound uh, helps first generation high school students who have never been to college, or parents have never been to college, get to college with resources and assistance throughout uh, a couple of years. And so the kids are here, students are here on campus for like four or five weeks. And this is the service learning project is like an afternoon thing. Um, we built it prior to um, coming down 
to install it, but that was kind of why I'm here to see if there was any interest in um, putting one of these directions, kind of colorful directional signs up um, next to the welcome center is kind of where Kyle had looked. Um, we're not very specific because I know there's the town lines, you know, I don't know how they run, but we're more interested in putting it out. Um, so you want the town to build it? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, oh sorry. sorry. Oh, right. I've done, I haven't explained all the details because that's how it's unraveling right now. But um, no, we would cover all the costs for installation. Um, if you want me to go into like materials and kind of like how that looks, I could as well. But that was the idea is to build it, bring it down, um, have it be part of the rail trail kiosk, whole central area in Johnson. Um, I think when you say kiosk, you mean the um, the Ted the, yeah, the Welcome Center. Center, yeah. So you know where the bike rack in the um the station to you know pump your tire or fix a wheel or whatever yeah. is on that side of the Alexander Center. Just beyond that, there's a kind of an open space that's, um, and we put it on the town side, so it's not in the state right of way. Yeah. Exactly. That was. That's the hoop we're trying to get around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's going to be similar to this. Really similar. Uh, a, a couple of um, the kids will come up with locations, so, you know, a little geography in there, plus some some math to yeah. have them do a couple. Right. And, and would, we, would some of those like actually give the distance to the village? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there'd there be some real, real stuff, not just where Moscow is. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, we were open to like balance, you know, offering the students some creativity and like, you know, the geography math piece, maybe we'll do one, you know, uh, some cosmic piece, something that do some real math for. And then, yeah, hopefully one, an upward bound one, and, you know, how far the college is from that point. And then, yeah, at least one or two. Yeah, we talked about Johnson. And this is something the Rail Trail Committee is supporting. Yeah. I would note that I'll provide a full upward bound to Chris. I'm always respected as a tell. Okay. Now it's like there's a motion. That one was quick. Further discussion? None? Uh, after was, after the last topic, nothing. I'll share this with everyone. Okay. Okay. in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, all those in Charlotte favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed. Yeah, 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 we have money to so make this Charlotte. thing kind of built yeah. for years yeah. too. Um, we're Good. really going to lacquer it up and um, make sure it looks um, just as nice as everything else at the Bob Center. Have it be pretty professional. Look, it's our hope because it will reflect up we're bound to do. So yeah. good. And Kyle, you had did you have another proposal regarding a mural inside the building? Or? That is another project that they're interested in doing in the future. I yes, we haven't really put anything together with specifics, but we just thought it was a really cool idea hatched and we were walking around. On welcome the inside center. of the welcome center, you know, there's the historical yep. um section and then there's just the plain wall that could use some color and art. As long as the above the windows. Yes. Or between the windows, I would be okay with it, but you know, yeah, it's yeah, still yeah. critical for the yeah. space. They create the Trump board. Yeah. The Trump board. All right. Uh, that's it. So we don't need but that. But that, that would be in the future. Okay. All right. Keep okay. It is there anything else you guys would like to share? Susan's been waiting patiently. We have the library waiting patiently. Okay. I skipped Rosemary like two hours ago. <laughs> yeah. She was still to wait. Since Kyle is here, can we just notify her that the earlier in the meeting we could go ahead and wait for that to the beautification committee? With like six contingencies. So you might want to follow. You approve what? Oh, uh, so a right of way from it for the beautification committee to plant. Uh, so oh. so oh. um, but oddly there enough, are conditions that our late Duncan wants to. You want to hear what the conditions are real quick? Sure. How, how about we email them out? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That'd be a surprise Joe? to you. Relationship. Uh, it doesn't require. But, anyways, any questions, let us know. Sorry. Thank you. Are you chosen? Do you want to hit the floor runner? Sure. What do you want to know? You're asking for $1,200 okay. to have somebody. Oh, well, thank you. Treat the ash trees down at Old Mill Park. Um, down by the kids' playground, there are eight good sized ash trees, uh, aside from the maple and the oak, which are smaller. Uh, closer to the entrance by the parking lot. Those are the only trees there. Free board has had requests over the years to plant trees there because people want more shade, but we can't do it. 
we've always been told we couldn't do it. So I don't know. Uh, we had those ash trees. I had a grant to pay for it two years ago to be treated with an insecticide protected against on the dashboard. The rule of thumb is when dash is 15 miles away, that's when you treat. You don't get the protection from it after it's infested. So two years ago, we had it done. Uh, this year, they've raised the price, of course, 25%, like everybody else. And it should run around $1,200. They price it by the diameter of inch. So if those trees have grown since two years ago, which they probably have, it should be around that same price. How are those trees? Doing. I mean, you mentioned that you had one die. Those are trees are healthy? the ones down in the end have got to have their roots in dirt. The one by the parking lot had to be planted at the same time, and it was only about this tall. It looked like it was on the top of some tongue or somewhere. And when it died, well, it was. <laughs> we, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's <clears throat> no place to plant a tree. True. Even if we could plant more trees, I don't know if it would be worth the investment. Well, you you could. So the the issue of sewer stuff is there's an active fifty percent on that property. Man, as most of you probably know, there's about six inches of dirt over a tailings plant. So they went in and leveled the tailings out, and then they put six inches of topsoil. Some places there isn't even six inches. Of it, so. <clears throat> but there's an active fifty permit that prohibits the town from excavating without getting prior approval from the two fifty commission. And I honestly can't remember whether we got minor amendments. But the children's playground was installed. Several the the path around the outside was installed and you did get approval. But the bottom line is there's six inches topsoil and then there's tailings. And if you've been down there and I had to ask you to I mean there are whole swaths where the grass is brown. It's like, yeah, what do you suppose? Uh, I'm surprised we <laughs> had probably, probably yeah. good eating, yeah. but I mean, <laughs> literally, there's a lot of dead, dead material. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. would, would the board but, be interested in approving a six months request? That's the ultimate question. Is that yeah. is the ultimate question. Yeah. Uh, trees aren't going to grow very good on six inches. Of material. Not well, good. we feel that it's important that we save the trees we have. Because future trees are not uh, to be relied on because of that. EAB is in Belvedere, was found in Belvedere two years ago. We don't know exactly where it is. The state had a program where they were hanging those purple traps, and they decided that Memorial County, they only had to do them in stow because the rest of us are not enough. Um, nobody had the money to go out and buy them and hang them up. So we're not sure if we don't have traps that we can go check. Um, today we have found damage, but it may be there. Nobody knows exactly where it is. So, evidently, you don't think you're throwing good money after that. Oh, definitely not. The treatment is effective. I trust it enough that I have my own done. Um, but if you wait until that tree is infested, which is difficult because we don't know where it is. So, you're not going to save the tree. It's true. Yeah, yeah, last two years. Two years. It was done two years ago. It has to be done this June. So obviously, these aren't going to be the only six ash trees alive in Johnson. This is um, no, but they're the only ones on Old Moon. Yeah, and they're nice trees. They're by the kids, the little kids, yeah. the new playground there. They're beautiful. Yeah, they're they're awesome. completely healthy. Uh, we do some they must trees. be, as you say, they must have some very high I don't see how they but they're right on the edge there. So. No grant money, I think it's edge. Not that I could find. And UCF Urban Forestry has decided that they won't burn any more grants to trim cash. It's too much to move. They will plan. Too much sorry? demand. Oh, too much demand. Too much demand. They'll, they'll <clears> pay <throat> you, um, if you have to take down ash, they'll pay to replace it. So, do you want a motion? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, or work. not up to twelve hundred dollars to treat the ash trees. Um, if you own that garden, is that the one? That you're the one making. I would be saying you say up to thirteen hundred. It says in the arboretum here. No, it's not at the arboretum. I know what it says here. I'm in saying. the arboretum. All right. So twelve hundred dollars to treat the ash trees of the old park. I'll make that for sure. Live or die. Motion on the floor. I'll second. Uh, she did say that she would like to increase to thirteen hundred, um, just to accommodate any extra. Are you friendly to that? I'm friendly to that. The trees were proud enough to go to the thirteen hundred. Are you good, Donna? Uh -huh. Motion and a second and a friendly amendment. Further discussion? Because when they're sitting, you don't have. They could die any time once they get a little deeper. I don't think at that age they're over 30 years old. I don't think they can die. Yeah. They're very healthy. Further, further discussion? All of the favor signify by saying aye. Aye. That was awful quiet. All those opposed? I might need to do a roll call on this one. <laughs> what did you say, Duncan? <laughs> you, you didn't say it very loud. I'll talk right now. No. <laughs> so did you hear him, Donna? Well, well it, usually if somebody's going to say no, they say that pretty loud. Eyes. If I don't hear no, I say no. Eyes, all those opposed? I think that, you know, no. <laughs> <laughs> the well, the the other option is if you it has to be done by a licensed pesticide person. If somebody can train for that license, which is not supposed to be difficult, they could do it themselves. If I had time, I'd do it, but I don't. You can send like the training book that we can do. So um, that means it would cost seventy nine ninety five instead of you know three hundred. Dollars piece next time. Can we yeah, actually so buy it... the insecticide legally? Yeah, I'm sorry. Can can you buy the insecticide legally? If you don't don't do it. It. How much is the class to do it? Seventy nine ninety five. No, no, this, that's the pesticide. The seventy nine. What's the difference oh. between that license and a license for agriculture? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't looked into it. Every, every farmer has to have a license. I mean, every field of corn has yeah. a little bit of phosphate on it. Yeah. Well, yeah. It may not be the same one. Oh, okay. Well, my point is, she already got her home. <laughs> it might be able to talk to residents of town. Or, well, she brought it up. No, I have. Yeah, I'm just saying, if know, we, if we know a license for pesticide person who would just, just do it. It's not difficult. You, you if you them. brought that up in the first place, I would probably. You have them. You have them. I would have volunteered for that. I'd have gone to that class, and then I could go around squirting trees all over the place, and I and I'm making fortunes. So yes, I go to that class if they authorize me to. The closest person is in Waterbury, so yeah. You have approval to spend an amount not to exceed thirteen hundred dollars. If you can get it down for less than that, let's see. You can pay Mike to go to the I would be happy to. You know, sir, don't get me wrong. I'd like to save those trees. But my point is, it seems like an awful lot of money. And if you had said that in the first place, I would have volunteered. It needs to be done in June. Okay. I mean, somebody has to learn how to do it. You have to have the equipment to do it and it's specialized equipment. Not a lot of it. Can't believe it's really expensive. Doesn't require heavy machinery, but you don't just sprinkle it on the grid. There's a lot of stuff on online that tells you you can do this and that. The only thing that really works, the state has, well, a lot of states have. Check it out. Is the injection and uh, and it's pricey. Certainly. Okay. So it'll need to be done again in two years if we can find a way to get around that. Uh, uh, then they send me to class. Build it into your budget. Give Mike an opportunity to take the class. If you give it to us, we'll we'll spend it. We we did five ash trees out the area. We had donations for that. Perfect. That was eight hundred dollars. If say, any of us so um, can raise that kind of money next week, yeah. yeah. I do believe the library is waiting to be <laughs> Thank you very much. Right here. The that. board Thank gives you. me authorization. I'll be the official priest for the <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Okay. Okay. Now we're on to the library. Bigger, bigger. Hi. Sorry, Rosemary. I got moved up. Do you guys want to come up? happened with the library uh, mitigation hasn't been obligated for uh restoring in place um we also have not heard back on um, the department of libraries grant however uh gene submitted a uh, second round of questions which is promising um that there's still interest in our project to relocate and then uh we also haven't heard back the village has not heard back and whether or not they can relocate to the or here so at this point, there's that doesn't pertain to the library, so we're going to stick to the library. Well, all three of those things would directly would pay for the moving library or mitigating threat, right? So that's that's a connection. There's three things that we're waiting to happen before we can make the next step at the library. Step one is obligating mitigating in place, and then the board will have to make a decision. Do you want to wait and see if we get a grant to move, or do you want to mitigate in place? Two second option we're waiting for is a Department of Library grant for the 1.5 million to uh, relocate the library in the field. Or three, if the sewage treatment plant gets the go ahead to relocate um, to, the this site to this site, then the, that would create enough of a cost benefit to then pay for a new library initial offices at the field. And so any one of those three directly affects the library, two of which are a new location, one of the same. And we have, uh, we did meet, um, Eric and I met with Senator Welch to try to put team and make some decisions. Uh, today I reached out to the Governmental Relations Committee to try to get some help to really just build an alternative funding stack to say, hey, we have big problems in Johnson and we need help. So what, what can you provide? So that's the update. So the real business at hand is, is the library would like to carry over unexpended funds. That was the second half of the same expense. Yeah. So what what do we want to make about it? So second, that was the update. Yeah. So that was the update. I have another request. We have a request. Yeah. So our request is to carry over funds that remain in two line items in our budget from this current fiscal year. Um, that's our building uh, maintenance and repair line and our, our building capital expense line. So we haven't been in our building, um, but nothing's been going on there. But uh, over a year ago, we got a quote for inserts for the windows. So basically to function like storm windows for better energy efficiency at the library. Um, so we have a quote for that. It's around uh, seven. Six thousand and some dollars. Um, these are inserts that go on the inside, but we've been informed by the company that makes them. Uh, they do a very precise measurement of each window to make these with lasers and stuff. And if we do them now and have them made, they may not fit the windows if the library is because of settling and stuff like that. So what we're requesting is to take those remaining funds that we have in this year's budget that hasn't been used and carry it over to the next fiscal year so that we can buy um, those inserts, either if the library is moved or if the library isn't, but we don't want to buy it and then not be moved. So moved. Well, you can make that motion idea. Yeah, yeah. I think, well, my friend, if I'm wrong, but uh, the fiscal year ends June 30th. So I think a motion is to reserve those funds. We don't have to reserve funds. We have to build a fund. But they could be rolled over. They could be rolled over. Could they be applied? Yeah. We, have, you Allocated have, this funds? has been approved in other years. We've done this other years where the select board has approved for funds that were unspent because either a contractor wasn't available, couldn't come. We're just for clarity, to the next I personally don't have any issue. 
I just get super scared. Uh, yeah, no, I'm just saying, but it's money. It's not, you know, not, no. it's not something that's never been done. We did the same thing with asphalt for like four or five years in a row, right? Well, Chris, do you see any issues with dedicating, reserving those and dedicating them for a specific purpose? In the... Would you no. prefer a motion for that or can no. you just do it? I think we should have a motion. All right, we've got it. Yeah. Mike made the motion. I seconded. Would Shane seconded? Would you guys be willing to have a friendly motion as of June 30th? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's a friendly amendment. Donna, we're good. Okay. Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All aye. opposed. Anything further? Um, no, that's it. Okay. Thank you very much for waiting. That was an easier. It was. It was. I just get super. Have you heard anything on the library other than what I said? I did. Have you heard anything there? Yes. Fall out of Yes. Good. It's going to be a good meetup. Thank you. Thank you. Rosemary, you want to jump in or just we'll wait for the song? Let her do her report. Okay. Right, said. I I keep asking her to do that. <laughs> the sheriff's contract is quick. Let's hammer it out. Uh, make a motion to approve the sheriff's contract. I'm assuming that you could both look at it and it's the numbers that are what we had in our budgets. Is that a good assumption? I said that on the phone. I bet the original of my office is signed the original. Definitely, please. Well, take that number and multiply it by four, Duncan. Or is that that's the total? Right. I mean, I guess my motion could be to authorize signing a contract based on the approved budget numbers. So we budgeted it. No, unfortunate. That's like three. Yeah. Twenty-four. Five hundred thirty-six thousand six hundred fifty-five dollars. Yeah. And there were two contracts, right? There was uh, five hundred dispatch yeah. and companies. Right. How much is this share? We budgeted for dispatch services seventy-six thousand five hundred twenty-eight dollars. So I have for this year twenty-five with seventy-four six ninety-one even. In dispatch, I'm dispatch. Or oh, wait a minute, no, 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 no. I was wrong. Seventy-four six ninety-one and five five two seven five five. Oh, okay. We're on the budget. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. We also have to this motion in a second. Are we okay? Are we okay? I'm a full budget. Get full budget. That one thing you need one thing you need to Yeah. Five fifty two, seven fifty five. Six five. Yeah. One thirty eight and eighty eight seventy five. Good night. Don't move, Mr. Chairman. And there's a motion to approve uh, it. Oh, we, we all have to sign that. Yes, yeah, we all have to sign that. Motion to approve the chair's department. Are you opposed? Yes. Motion to approve. Are you approving patrol and communications? So the full contract for both. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And we have the same. Motion on the floor is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Further discussion. No further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed. Yeah, let's have it. You can really cross the room. Can I have do you have the class for room policy that we can all sign in your file? And give it to Duncan, that's um, not that's not signable. It just says it just uh, doesn't have your full name on it. Which one? 
the class four road policy? Yeah. Really? I think so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you weren't your best friend. <laughs> no. I don't. Is that the one? I sometimes don't use my last name. Yeah, well, but mine is on there, Mike Dunham, and technically for official documents, it should be Michael Dunham. Oh, this one says Michael Dunham. All right. Rosemary. Then you look at the resolution. Do you like the floor? Yeah. I don't have the vote. You don't know it? Can you still vote? Class four? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There should be a blank one on the bottom. Right. Yeah, we've got it. That would be the second to last item in the packet. No, this is the capital construction project. Uh, See? Yeah, I know. that. That's where there's Duncan was. Yeah, he, he fixed that. He I fixed that. Him, I asked him. And, yeah. And, and Mike Dunham needs to be fixed to Michael. Just did it. Two minutes. We don't find that. Nobody saw it yet. But I'm hoping that's still on the agenda, right? You know, it's yeah. this. Yeah. 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 Okay, but then start signing in red ink. Is that legal? Date, you got a date though. It's pink. I just can't tell it. Yeah, pink. Yeah. 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 Okay, Rosemary. Okay, on the budget status report, to date, we have spent a little over 73,000, 72% of budget. And in the revenue column for current taxes, we did get a final true up for the school, and I have made that adjustment. That's the and for the flood account, we have received some insurance money. For the it's stated for the library and the state park. And that is on um, page 10. Is that a back? No, the revenue part. Is on page nine. Very for the uh, insurance bill, please. Where am I missing that? On page nine, we got the bottom where it says insurance bill, please. It starts. It starts at the bottom and then goes on page ten. Majority of that is for the library. They sent us checks for properties that were within the, the flood tax. And then you said those were insurance reimbursements? Yes. Yeah. We have not received any money from the media. All in all, financially. So we received almost half. For a company for from the trail. We're waiting for an emergency. We haven't received any money for the municipal building yet. It's 235 and 86. Yeah, we I was gonna say we got that we signed that uh last meeting by 2024. So that was 239. 
235. So we're actually going to be four thousand dollars ahead. Oh, we still have to buy all the lots of lights. Yeah, we have to like put it all back. Okay. okay. We have a, this year. This year does that include the forty thousand for furniture and other stuff we need to buy? No, but a total all funds. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I already signed this. That's saying that. Well, you got to so account for that ARC money in the budget. Just, that's why it looks. Sure, like Mark, who's in the pool? Right? That's $500,000. 535. And I'm supposed to create a third class. Mm -hmm. Invest. We should end up by minimum of five thirty-five, <laughs> or else we waste in our consistent. Okay. And the delinquents are terrible right now. Yes. I haven't seen single pages of delinquents in years. Well, I don't think I've ever seen single pages. Actually, two hundred nine thousand nine sixty-four fifty-seven. One. One. Who wants to sign contracts? Uh, <laughs> any other questions on the budget status report? I would say for a I would say for a good year. For everything bad that happens financially. I think we're all happy. All right. We're not going to have to ask Mark over it for a long time. Not quite. It's because we're in all the interest on the play. I've got a lot of other things to say. The first one is in front of you. What would you like to go into next? Taxes. Going for taxes. I printed out you a list of currently delinquent. And we are way short for the past two years. We're totally collected at 96.81%. Last year we had almost 98%, and the year before that was over 98%. I believe so. That's what happened with the other one. Oh, that they're going to show it to what you got on each A lot, yeah. A lot of these are not yeah. blood crimes. Right. right. Top level. Yeah. Are we going to look at the list again? Send some of these to a tax collector. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've got a, the legislator did some changes to the tax sale process. I've got to read up on that process. It's making it more difficult. Oh, they didn't make it easier? No, they didn't make it easier. Oh, okay. so, <laughs> it's just what I've added. Some people have like $15 or something. Mm -hmm. Uh, Thirty dollars and twelve cents. My guess is probably just a little bit of yeah. You know, I mean, overall at ninety six, almost ninety seven percent collected. That's not. I'm not surprised. I'm, I'm actually thinking that's not as bad as I thought it might be. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You uh, we have a tax sale policy. I think so. We have a delinquent yes. tax policy. Yes. Yes. Tax sale policy. We haven't had a tax sale in like four or five years. No, we haven't had in the we haven't had one since COVID. Yeah. Are those effective or they actually like yeah. okay. yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, it's pretty $4, $600. I've never had one before. I had a jewelry, but everybody was able to do 
But we never went with that long after once we got the money. But that's like the risk of going so long, you know, mm -hmm. it's harder to catch up. I've never seen anyone go with Usually it's called several mobile homes. Yeah. I know it's a higher cost. Oh, no. Yes, sometimes it does. Sometimes the expenses too. Yeah. Like the tax, outweigh the like tax. Is there so you gotta follow up? Yeah, we really find out what the new CDs are, then maybe make the tax sale policy. Yeah. Uh, anything else in your report? That's all. Go ahead. Well, thank you very much. I, we really need to change these headers. That's a key thing. Second time. I'm sorry. How does it carry over as that? You can make it whatever you want. You yeah. Do? Make it hot pink like you can. Uh, who uploads files to the town website? Uh, I don't. Rhetorical question. We approved and signed a class for road policy. That should be uploaded to the website under ordinance policy. Right? Correct. Yeah, Rosemary and I just had a conversation. Neither one of us have credentials to go on our website. Well, neither. I know. Well, that's why we we're laughing. It's like this is silly. Right. So, uh, next item is interim rec director pay, <laughs> along with rec director job description. So they kind of meld together. But pay is um, there are a few outstanding items and a need for um, for support. In the interim, until we hire a new director, Dean has agreed to do it. Um, and in fact, last weekend he was still um, an employee, but a key card that was issued by the school to get into the gym didn't work, so he had to swing up there with his own to to get into the school for gymnastics to take place. And there was like, you know, it's kind of an emergency, right? You need a rec director here, even if they're just to make sure things can like sports can happen. Um, there's no signing up really right now, but there are, you do need somebody who's like can answer a call. Um, he's agreed to do that. He's also agreed to follow through with the, we received $25,000 last week for a new playground at Regent Field. Um, he wants to follow that through and then he wants to make sure um, gymnastics and then if soccer needs, he'll start get soccer signups going. He just doesn't want to see a sport fall through and he doesn't want to see those playgrounds fall through. So if we could, um, and so uh, the rate of pay during his intern, um, and I sat down with Rosemary and we looked at what we're paying him now for like his hourly rate plus benefits plus retirement. And it was to just continue paying him what we paid him all along, just the hourly rate of the, of the equivalent, but not, but he's off of benefits and he's off of, uh, so it's, it's saving us money by just paying it out. What is your problem? You know, um, I Twenty-five, twenty-four. Twenty-five, twenty-four. Now, there's a chance it might be twenty-eight, forty-seven, but I think that that includes your payroll tax. I just have to make sure that's correct or gross merit. What are the board's wishes? How many hours is the board? It's going to be minimum. You know, it's only like as so. It's going to be like two hours on a Sunday morning because someone has to has a problem or crisis, or it's going to be. Four hours to work with the playground company to site the new playground equipment. It's not, we're not talking about, we're talking about just a couple of hours here and there, not even a schedule. It's pretty much like, Dean, I have a crisis, I need your help. He'll come in for a couple of hours and then go home. What's his rate of pay last night? 20 years ago, we had a volunteer did that for 
but we got to really. For the Lord's wishes, they like to pay uh, on an hourly basis as needed. I think, I think that's the best option. Do we want to put a cap on how many hours a week, though, or not really? And are we going to put ourselves in a position? I mean, you could put a cap on me and then to like direct them to do work, and, and I could come to you if there's a bigger project saying, hey, this came up. Yeah, I mean, the, the cap is probably your discretion. And then I'll let you know if it's over five hours a week or something. I, I doubt it's going to be five hours. But if you see in the playground project, it could be five hours a day for, for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. But we might have a new director in a month. So, and then <laughs> he might pass off. I always wonder how it's going to happen. I know. Uh, I wish that's not the only thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, then you go to bed sad. <laughs> so, um, give me a rationale why we should pay. I'm totally in favor of paying a reasonable wage and just trying to figure out why we should pay the cost of the benefits. No, well, that's what he's, his, his base rate is twenty one ninety nine. dollars He's adding all of any something. So well, because that's essentially what the town is paying per hour. So like, he was an employee, you know, as a 29, we were paying that much per hour. Um, it just it was shut. Yeah, he would. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's just what the town was paying. The value of the benefits would be paid. Well, yeah. you know, that's actually a good question. He received the actual new benefit, so he was getting pretty close. Okay. So, the, yeah, the, the point that Duncan is making there, though, is that it's, you know, that's additional on top of the, the base yeah, pay. Right. And and that's something that you get because you're a full-time employee. Um prorated, for for rated, right. Um yeah. You could make a motion based on a dollar. No. I'd make a motion we pay him an even twenty-three dollars an hour during the period of time between players and Director. All right, motion and second for the discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. All those opposed? Nay. Yeah. And the ayes have it. Uh, next item is recreation job description and posting. Um, so uh, Shane and I are supposed to put together an job description. Um, and then remember last week, you, I guess some soccer coaches and other community members, yeah, baseball coach, I think, yeah, so reached out and wanted mm -hmm. to um, assist in the process. And it seems like, you know, we've had three directors in three years. It seems like a great time to get more input and make this job description what it should be. Um, and Dean has also agreed to give his two cents about what work he didn't work in as well. So I think we could have a much more worldly approach. Um, so A is select board and has full expectations of what the duties are, and B, the new director has full expectations of what the duty are, duties are and what, what they actually are with the time commitment that are involved. And so this uh, might be best to await. Can the ask is can we wait two more weeks and put it on the 17th agenda, even though it's a work session, so then we can get it posted. Or do you want to just give Shane and I the full leg to just get it out and get it posted when you're ready? And I will say that I did make minor tweaks. Um, I do think that as it was tweaked, I mean, really as it was before, it would have been sent out um, with the tweaks. I think I just cleaned up it, had some sort of unnecessary reference to community development. I think since we have a community development specialist now, not necessary to have that included there. Um, and there was some reference, or there wasn't any reference really to um, rail trail related things as a recreation, uh, you know, groups that you should reach out or 
the, the coordinator should, should work with. Um, so I added that as a component to so you guys the skate but, park too. Um, the skate park was already in there, um, oh. actually. So, uh, but just yeah, tweak this. Like, if you're looking for people to volunteer, they get in touch with you. Yeah, or shame. You have to put that advertisement out. Sorry, is this volunteering their thoughts for the job description? Yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, yeah, you, you have edit access on that document. So if you want to make sure. No, no, no. I know somebody who reached out to me uh, recently okay. and wanted to serve on that committee or whatever. Okay. You want to call it. So yeah. I would tell that individual to give probably you a call. That, yeah, well, it, 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 it sounds like this could turn into a search committee for this position. And yeah, I, yeah. I think more people involved in this thing, the better. Yeah, I agree. You know, and they get a good document, they get a good job description. Yeah, I think getting the insight of the coaches, there's like a distance from the coaches in the town. And I think getting the insight of the coaches, like face to face, to say, we need more support from the person to do this and then get it into the job description. Yeah. You know, or, or the or the new coordinator to say, hey, well, you're gonna have to line your own lines. How what do you need to do that? You know, that kind of you know, it's a give and take and kind I of think making it what it is. But do you want it to come back to you guys before it goes out, or do you just trust Shane to meet with the form this committee to meet and then Shane and I will put it out? I mean, I think that's really the takeaway today. I wouldn't mind seeing it again, uh, but uh, the board. Is, I'd like to see the finish uh, product myself. Well. Casey wanted to add something. Yeah, and I do have an opinion. Um, I hate to see the, the time pressure to have a job description out <clears throat> just so that the job can be continued because there is that need and that is a reality. Um, but, but the bigger reality is that. Um, you know, a broader and deeper and more time spent considering is needed. Uh, <clears throat> even, uh, you know, one aspect that I think ought to be talked about is separating the program aspect from the physical facility maintenance aspect of that job, possibly to be we need to be separated. Uh, that's something actually uh, Dean and Jason Whitehill and I and others uh mentioned briefly there, there's all kinds of things to be considered and they need time and i don't want i hope not to see it rushed because you need someone to fill the job i Thanks. think that's probably yeah to try it's to make sure it's getting product. a job description back to us for posting so we're not even posting yeah. i think it will also you know, we we heard I know I heard from some of the individual community members who were frustrated with aspects of the condition. I think it would be useful to try to get that feedback too. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's just critical that we have a clear job description. The expectations are very clear. You know, this could be a totally different job than anything we've ever seen. You know, like this is an opportunity to make it exactly what you want. Or if you can get any input from the coaches, the people I don't want it. Not probably. So, are you guys good with Shane and Tom working with community members? Yes, for the job. You're okay with that? Yeah, yeah I, I mean, it would be wonderful if they're back here by the work section meeting, but if it's, if it's not, I agree with Kate said, we have have a good product or something. Yeah. Yeah. We'll make sure I have the employee, that's, that's what it will do. So, Tom, if you could just maybe like take all of the people that we've received anything on and just put them all on an email thread and we can try to set a date that we can meet. Perfect. I'm actually starting an email to you right now. All right. So our next item, we're getting into extra items here. Our next item, um, Jan said that there was a request from the Rail Trail Committee to not necessarily receive grant funds to purchase material. They're a town committee, but it's donations. I think yeah. we can I'll, I'll explain a little bit clear. So we have identified um, 
I believe it's four local businesses and one private individual who is going to uh, donate um, the dollar figure we're asking for is $250. Um, and that will cover uh, pre bill or sorry, pre cut um, picnic table kit uh, that um, that retail or that was priced out at about $212. And then um, we would put a little plaque on those tables saying, who sponsored it and who assembled it. And then the hope would be for us to have a um, Father's Day event if we can get it all together in time, uh, where we would invite people down to either the Village Green or Legion Fields to uh, assemble the tables together and then put them out in various places around town. Um, this would be at no cost to the town. We just need the town to act as a pass through for the money that we have received as pledges from interested parties. Five is the goal. Thought is to have two of them on the village greens, one on Legion Field, um, and then I had heard it was a little bit um, not decided about the last couple of them, but um, Beard was an option for one, the Arboretum was an option for one, and um, the new kind of path area that they're building uh, at the studio center. Um, that was another option. So, but the, the village green has two tables that were there that are no longer there because they've just deteriorated over time. Um, I don't believe there's ever been one at the at Legion Field, but yeah, they would put them there and that a couple other places are there. A couple of them there, but it's a little too Right. Do right. the trustees, are they aware of the fact that um, there's an interest in placing picnic tables on? So that's an interesting question, uh, and it, I don't have all of the information on this, uh, but what was brought up by um, Doug Moldy, who does have a lot of information on historical happenings in town, uh, is that under, I think, the Main Street project, he said, maintenance for those types of things for the villages bailiwick. So... Uh, Originally at the, the rail trail committee uh, meeting, the conversation was to hopefully have them pay for the tables. Um, both BJ and I were pretty clear that that probably wasn't gonna happen. So then the hope was to get them to maybe pay for one of the tables. Um, it has been asked a couple of times for that to be put on the village's agenda and uh, so far has not been put on the agenda for whatever reason. So um we are where we are uh we're excited to you know get as much private money as possible and put as many tables out there as we can um understanding that it's going to benefit the village uh and you know maybe they'll be willing to spend the money to maintain the tables in the future but but i think it's i mean they technically not technically they they own the tree yes so presumably you're seeking we would have to get the information to put it place. Yes. Yeah. There are other places where the table could be there. So what do you what's the ask about so what do you actually the ask is, is so when I had asked um Susan yeah. asked Rosemary, the answer that came back was that we just needed select board authorization to allow that has to happen. I don't know. It, it seemed like there might have been some confusion about what order everything was going to happen. The plan is that we will get the checks into the town and then the invoice will show up and the, that money can be, it won't be any town taxpayer funds that are used for this. Um, I think that might have been confused, um, but I think what the, the ask is for us to just have explicit approval that discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. The next all item was one that I had. Um, I 
it's come up in the past joint meetings, joint conversations, but the cable where the village uh, flies banners across Pearl Street, there's no documented highway right away access permit or anything. <laughs> and to make sure that it's clear and concise, I'm proposing to the board that we have the village fill out a highway access permit application and we waive the $965 fee associated with that. So that way, the village can do work there and there's no question. Can we do that for any and all banners? Give me a blanket, a blanket to. permit for the year period. Yeah, that's good. And the only condition I would suggest that we put on it is that they follow I mean, PCD standards for traffic control and safety. <clears throat> yeah. So they'll be working on the highway and they, they are very familiar with how to sign it. And I'm sure they'll do all that stuff. I think we should probably work with it. Would you like to make the motion so it's clear? I would move that we issue a blanket permit for zero dollars to the village. Still in place banners. They really do it in the Yeah, it's the only location. According to their policy, because I think the policy. I think they do. They do. Yeah. So, yeah, I think Mike's on that. Wording is good in accordance with the village's own policy. So you have one condition that they follow in each of the standards in terms of. Okay, motion on the floor. Is there a second? Right. Motion and second further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, next up is. And this is not exactly the same, and it's not one, so we probably can't talk about it, but I'd like to at least say before we think about it. No. Technically, when the village has an emergency repair of water or sewer or something like that in the town highway, they're supposed to get a right away permit to fix that. They get a SAR right away. Well, it, it, because it's in our right away. Um, so I, I, for future discussions at some point, I think we should talk about issuing a blanket permit for them to do emergency repairs yeah. on any of all town highways for their infrastructure. You don't have to do it tonight, so it, yeah. maybe it's something we could. The first of the larger issue we had maybe was the more fiber net and how are they going to issue from the how are they going to issue permit for all the underground work that's going to happen and they're replacing infrastructure through all the communications or contractors from preparing fiber right away trying to like negotiate they don't even have the maps yet of where that's going to be and so Jason and I were trying to figure out how to like streamline the process, the process for them and maybe a blanket permit for fiber net might be the solution. And they say, you know, same idea, right? These are guys who know what they're doing. They have all the equipment, they have the experience and it's infrastructure that we don't want to say no to. So. And it's going to be underground. They just, it's like, if you, go, if, you, if you look at all stream crossings, you'll see a pole come up. The wire go over and a pole go down. They have a neat little machine where they could do direct very but um, we need to be very cautious about how we do that because we don't want them in our ditches. You know, maybe, you know that, that's a question. It's like I think we need to give them specs to how to bury and give a permit to that spec. Sounds like two great things for a future meeting. Yeah. That's for right. sure. We're coming up on the time. I didn't yeah. promise we would be out of here by 9 30. I said I was gonna try. He's breaking his promise. Uh, next up is a Volrec, uh, Volrec signature authorization. Uh, Randall mentioned this in his report, uh, but the rail trails Volrec grant. We had approved the blind trail grant five but, months ago. But it we came, didn't authorize it. It came, it came to me and there was no authorization to sign it. Uh, so we approved the application, but not the acceptance signature. I would move to accept it on the right to sign the second. Okay. Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? We're good. Next item that was added the bonding resolution. Let me give it just a tiny bit of. Um, I, 
we we voted at the last board meeting to go out the bond for four hundred twenty thousand dollars. There is actually by statute a resolution required for that authorization, and this authorization is based on one of the bills did a few years ago. And the only other thing, I think the one that you guys are looking at may not have, I'm suggesting after um, where it talks about article one and it says uh, a sum not to exceed $420,000, I'm suggesting adding the phrase reduced by any other available funds. Yeah. Okay, you've got that one. He's got the sign. All right. Then you want to investigate correctly. Yeah, that's why I've been corrected. Well, no, Mike needs to be. Mike, let me see. Michael, can't go to Michael. Michael, there's your sign. Yeah. So basically, we, you know, we authorized this at the last meeting without really realizing or remembering that it was a formal resolution. So I would move to accept the resolution and the hand. That goes sort of one to sign it. The dates are signed for the election to get to Rosemary and that in line with the gubernatorial election for the state primary in August. So that way Rosemary didn't have to hold a special you have to notice it as a special meeting, but it's no extra staff time to hold that election because you're already having stuff. Right. And we have to just for recollection standpoint, we have to have in hand no later than September 30th commitment of the town match to the Northern Board's Regional Commission. So I think if we hold it in mid-August by by September 30th, we should be in a good position for the six weeks. So basically if this is voted down, the uh, the project is going down to at that point we would we would probably have to make the decision to send the RC money back. We have a lot of people, or sorry, Harper will make us figure out what to do with that. By December 31st, you have to have it. Yep. I don't think we did uh, Oh, you're yeah. right. We had to roll that, yeah, in. We had to roll that into the, yeah. the, spend, the spending that we have the other. We did, we did do that. So we, oh, we committed. Yeah, yeah we, we've yeah. already committed. We don't have to. Yeah, don't have to lost there. There. This is going to, this is where the rubber is going to meet the road because the original. Deal was done at town meeting with those present, and this here is going to be a ballot. So, yep. we certainly don't have a done deal for this investor. Yeah, and we do have to have a public meeting. Um, and then, so, you know, I probably suggest and recommend that we put together a good informational back in the Mark, I executed one for the board. I'll tell you why I don't support this, but I. Me and supporting the majority of the board, I will not. I believe I, all the boards I serve on, if I lose a vote, I don't go out with that. Right. But you support the, support the board decision, I support, the and board so board that's board. the answer you would give. That, yes, that is. But yeah. if somebody asks you how you really feel, you have to tell them. I will, but yes. I'm not going to advertise it, I'm going to support the board's decision. Right. So. It's actually pretty cool that the Voice of the people are going to decide the future. Absolutely, right. right. It's like true democracy in its finest. Yeah. I mean, as you see in the very beginning, it was just those who were present. So you have a motion. Okay. We have a second. Yes, sir. All right. Motion a second. For the discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Is that I should have thought of that. Uh, you don't have a signing. Like a sarcastic. No, no, the signing is a oh, yeah. approval. We don't have a sign. We signed a facility face, like a smiley face out of it. Sticking your tongue in. Yeah, I absolutely agree. 
think you have all the information. He's ready to pay that back by looking at it. It's got a percentage of the three if you want it every second for this. It really three seconds must be all I don't think. But you're right. Well, you know, the just got three hundred and thirty grand from yeah. there. Yeah. But they're spending that off. The art money on the yeah. garage. Yeah. 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 But they're not going to spend it on the garage. Doesn't that depend on getting the garage? Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, I mean, who knows? Who knows? I don't care. Let, let's look there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not our surgeons, not our monkeys. So our last <laughs> item is. An executive session for employee evaluation, unless I missed anything else. Hope not. I don't foresee any action coming out of it, Donna. Okay. Don't want me to just let you know. You're, you're skipping it. I'm skipping it. Okay. Kind of an issue. Here's the slide back. I will be. Thank you.